Dr. Ennis. Good morning, Dr. Jackson Jones. How are you today? I'm doing well. So happy that you're here and you're joining us with prayer. Thank you for the opportunity. Prayer, prayer this morning. You are more than welcome. All right. Thank you so much, TJ. We will call this Tuesday, April 6, 2021, Douglas County Board of uh, Commissioners Legislative Meeting to order. This meeting is built, being held virtually. Again, we are still in the pandemic phase, Board of Commissioners, and I appreciate your patience as we uh, move through this pandemic. Uh, again, uh, Board of Commissioners, I would like to start with roll call to verify that we have a quorum this morning. I will start with District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III, if you could acknowledge your presence. Present and accounted for. District 2 Commissioner. Uh, Present. And Vice Chairman Kelly. Okay, District 3 Commissioner Jorinia Carthen. Present. Okay, District 4 Commissioner Ann jones Guider. Present. And Chairman Ramona Jackson Jones present. Thank you. All right, this morning, Board of Commissioners, we have the, the pleasure and the privilege of having our senior pastor, Dr. Everton A. Ennis from New Jerusalem uh, Praise and Worship Center with us this morning to uh, render invocation. And after the invocation, Board of Commissioners, please join me in reciting the Pledge uh, of Allegiance. Uh, at this time, Dr. Ennis, Again, we welcome you, and we're so proud that you're bringing prayer this morning to uh, Douglas County. You have the floor, Dr. Ennis. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Shall we pray? Our gracious God, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. As we gather this morning in this virtual meeting, we invoke your holy presence in our midst. We thank you for the gift of life and the measure of health and strength that we can celebrate here today. We thank you for the opportunity to lead, the privilege to be servants of the people, whether in this political forum or as spiritual leaders here in Douglas County. I pray your wisdom, your guidance and direction now upon this board of commissioners as they go forth making plans and making decisions on behalf of the people of Douglas County. Please endow them with wisdom from on high. Give them that determination that they need to press through the difficulties and the challenges. And may the people be well served as a result of this meeting today. Heavenly Father, I pray a special blessing upon each commissioner, Commissioner Guider, Commissioner Mitchell, Commissioner Robinson, Commissioner Carthen, and Chairman Jackson Jones. Bless them personally and their families. They have given themselves as servants of your people, and I pray that they will be richly rewarded. Bless the other administrative team in our county, and I pray, Lord, that the residents, as we observe, as we celebrate, as we watch this proceeding today, that you will even guide the responses, the conversations online and elsewhere. Thank you for making our county one that is a wonderful place to live. Please help us to keep it this way. And we thank you for all these blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Dr. Ennis, thank you so much for the extraordinary prayer. It's so much needed all over uh, Douglas County and all over this nation. And you have uh, certainly uh, embarked or imparted such grace upon this county today. And um, this this is a great start for our meeting. And thank you for coming in today. We thank you so you much for the opportunity. God bless you all. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. Board of Commissioners, if you could please join me, if you would join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Board of Commissioners, thank you so much. And Board of Commissioners, next we will 
Certainly, uh, Clark, I'm going to yield to you to determine if we have any public comment from any of our citizens this morning. Uh, uh, Madam case. Chairman, if I may, um, could I just ask Mr. Mons to please hang me up off this, um, please? Yes, yes, Dr. Ennis. Uh, Director Martin or either TJ, if you could uh, make sure you uh, disconnect Dr. Ennis. He has another meeting right now, if you could. Thank you. Yep. Dr. Ennis, if you could just click the leave button on your computer, it should you should see something at the top right hand corner that indicates leave. Okay, he did. Thank you. All right. Again, we appreciate Dr. Ennis coming in this morning, rendering prayer. Um, clerk, is it anyone here who has signed up for public comment this morning? Uh, anything that's related to the uh, or germane to the agenda is acceptable. So, you have anyone sign up this morning? No, ma'am, we did not have anyone sign up. You certainly could check if you would just pull the um, computer to make sure we don't have any citizens that may have come on that we're not aware of that we want to speak this morning. Yes, ma'am. I, although I don't recognize a couple of names, so I will ask if there's anyone on, um, on the line who would like to speak this morning um, on, on anything regarding the agenda, and it has to be regarding the agenda. Is there anyone on the line? Okay, Chairman, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, thank you so much, um, Clerk uh, Watson. Clerk Commissioners, we will proceed with our meeting this morning. Again, I would like to thank you for your time this morning, and we certainly will be sensitive as we push through this uh, moment. Uh, approval of the minutes, Board of Commissioners, we do have the Commission meeting minutes of March 16, 2021, the work session minutes of March 16, 2021, and the executive session minutes of March 15, 2021. Are there any direct, uh, co corrections, deletions, or additions that need to be made at this time? No, ma'am. Being none, the minutes stand approved. Proclamations this morning, Board of Commissioners, we do have a proclamation this morning. Tab number four, which is proclaiming the week of April 5th through 11th, 11, 2021 is Public Health Week in Douglas County. This proclamation is so de deserving because of all the hard work that our uh, public health officials and our staff and nurses and doctors have certainly um, rendered uh, a significant amount of their time this year regarding uh, the pandemic and also in 2020. So it is my privilege and my honor this morning to read this proclamation. Um, the proclamation is from the Douglas County Board of Commissioners and is for the uh, recognizing Cobb and Douglas Public Health Week. It says, whereas Cobb and Douglas Public Health with our partners promotes and protects the health and safety of the residents of Cobb and Douglas counties and whereas Cobb and Douglas Public Health is an acknowledged leader among health districts and was the first district in Georgia and among only 2% in the nation to achieve the national, national accreditation from the health, Public Health Accreditation Board, PHAB, in 2015 and has maintained the level of excellence. And whereas 100 years since its inception, Cobb and Douglas Public Health continues to be a critical strategic organization whose focus is to prevent illness and injury, an advocate for health equity, promote optimal health, prepare for disaster response, and reduce the spread of severe infectious, infectious diseases such as the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas the second week of April each year is observed as national Public Health Week, and whereas each year during Public Health Week, Cobb and Douglas Public Health celebrates its devoted and compassionate staff who selflessly um, serve and care for our public health clients and community members, and whereas Cobb and Douglas Public Health staff, by way of providing services, awareness, and education to its clients, and community members works together with its clients and community members to keep the community safe and healthy, has worked tirelessly this past year fighting the COVID-19 virus. Now, therefore, 
we, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim April 5th through 11th, 2021 as Cobb and Douglas Public Health Week in Douglas County. So proclaim the 6th day of April 2021. Sign, and it will be, and we have to approve it, Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, uh, Henry Mitchell III, uh, Kelly G. Robinson, Terenia Carthen, and Ann jones Guider. We are so privileged this morning to uh, certainly bestow this, uh, this so well-deserved proclamation on our public health uh, officials and staff and appreciate everything that you, uh, Lisa Crossman is our deputy director of Douglas and Cup, uh, Cobb Public Health has done and also Dr. Meemark, your entire staff, the nurses, the epidemiologists, and I can go on and on. It has been a rodeo, but you all have held the, the, the horse in the middle of the lane. And I am just so proud to be part of this moment. We, I never thought in my lifetime that I would live through a pandemic neither did you or your staff. And you all have stepped up to the plate. You have set standards where others will be judged from now on. And thank you so much. Board of Commissioners, are there any comments before I call the question? Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the uh, Cobb and Douglas Public Health Week proclamation? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board of Commissioners? We have a motion and a second. Please um, prepare to cast your votes. Nope. Madam Clerk, yes. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, we have a 5-0 uh, unanimous vote, uh, Board of Commissioners, and the motion carries. And congratulations to our pub, uh, Douglas, well, I want to say Cobb, Douglas Public Health Team, for all of your hard work and all the things that you have done in Douglas County and all the measures that you've put in place and for protecting the safety and welfare of all Douglas County citizens. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jackson Jones. I'd love to be able to yield to Dr. Creighton. I think he's on the line. He's our okay. board of health chair. And I think he was gonna make a couple of comments. He's in between patients, but wanted to step <laughs> in to uh, say thank you. Oh, absolutely. I would love to uh, allow an opportunity for Dr. Creighton to speak. And I appreciate what he does also to serve on as our chairman of the board for our public health here in Douglas County. Dr. Creighton, are you there? I, I, I am here. Can y'all hear me okay? <laughs> yes. Okay. Right. Well, one, uh, Chairman uh, and, and uh, distinguished uh, county commissioners, thank you for this uh, proclamation. And I, I am I'm very happy I was able to take a minute between patients uh, to really honor these people that are working for you. They, they are doing all the work uh, through what has been definitely a trying year. I, I like the rodeo analogy. Uh, but I think it's been more a bucking bull than it has been a uh, horse. Uh, but that they they they've held on tight, uh, and it's amazing work. But I also always like to remember that despite this unprecedented once in a lifetime event, remind folks all the other things that public health does for you: keeps your drinking water safe through sewer management uh, and septic tank. Um, keeps um, your swimming pool safe. You know we're, we've got a beautiful sp spring day, and we're looking forward to the. The summer, uh, making sure uh, babies uh, in in car seats uh, are safe. The the babies can't wait program, uh, immunizations, monitoring other outbreaks like hepatitis and whatnot. Just the the breadth, keeping your restaurants safe. Just the breadth of work that these do these people do on top of managing a pandemic this year. Uh, so uh, I am very proud uh, to to be affiliated with these people. Uh, they have they have my congratulations as well as earning this. Uh, because this is an earned pro pro proclamation. So thank you for that. Thank you so Dr. much, Dr. Creighton. Dr. Creighton, thank you so much. Dr. Jackson Jones, thank you so much. On behalf of all of our employees and our board and leadership team, we just really appreciate 
all the partnership that you've provided this year and for the past hundred years that Douglas Public Health has been in existence. Um, I can't leave a meeting uh, and represent our agency well without reminding folks that we are not quite through the pandemic yet. So please make sure to watch your distance, wear your mask, uh, wash your hands, and to please get vaccinated when it is made available to you. Everyone 16 and above can now get vaccinated um, we are opening appointments every week out at, out at Arbor Place Mall, as well as other providers that we're working with throughout Douglas County. So please avail yourself of the opportunity to get vaccinated as soon as you can. And thank you again for this proclamation. We really appreciate the support. So well deserved and thank you as well. Board of Commissioners, we're gonna move on to tab number five, proclaiming the week of April 18th through 2020, I'm saying through 24, 2021 is Crime Victims Rights Week in Douglas County. And our own district attorney, uh, Dahlia Racine, will read the proclamation. And good morning. Good morning. District attorney. I'm doing great. Well, you have the floor. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity um, to join the national efforts of recognizing National Crime Victims Rights Week. Uh, and while this is a national event, we are proud of the support of our community, of the um, commissioners and, and locally to affirm our position in supporting victims' rights. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the essential workers in our community, in our office that are doing this work, such as our victim witness advocates and our other community partners, which are mentioned in our proclamation. So without further ado, a uh, proclamation from the Douglas County Board of Commissioners of National Crime Victims Rights Week, April 18th through the 24th, 2021. Whereas this commemorative week celebrates the energy, perseverance, and commitment that launched the victims' rights movement, inspired its progress, and continues to advance the cause of justice for crime victims. And whereas crime can leave a lasting impact on any person, regardless of age, national origin, race, creed, religion, gender, sexual orientation, immigration, or economic change. And whereas incorporating communities, existing experts, and trusted sources of support into efforts to fully serve survivors will develop a criminal justice system response that is truly accessible and appropriate for all victims of crime. And whereas with the unwavering support of their communities and victim service providers behind them, survivors will be empowered to face their grief, loss, fear, anger, and hope without fear of judgment, and will feel understood, heard, and respected. And whereas honoring the rights of victims, including the rights to be heard and to be treated with fairness, dignity, and respect, and working to meet their needs, rebuilds their trust in the criminal justice system. And whereas National Crime Victims Rights Week provides an opportunity to recommit to ensuring that all victims of crime, especially those who are challenging to reach or serve, are offered appropriate services in the aftermath of crime. And whereas the Douglas County District Attorney's Office is hereby dedicated to strengthening victims and survivors in the aftermath of crime, building resilience in our communities and our victim responders, and working for a better future for all victims and survivors. Therefore, let it be resolved that the Douglas County Board of Commissioners proclaims the week of April 18th through 24th, 2021, as Crime Victims Rights Week and reaffirm this county's commitment to creating a victim service and criminal justice response that assists all victims of crime during Crime Victims Rights Week and throughout the year and to express our sincere gratitude and appreciation for those community members, victim service providers, and criminal justice professionals who are committed to improving our response to all victims of crime so that they may find relevant assistance, support, justice, and peace. So proclaim the sixth day of April, 2021, and hopefully with vote and approval by our chairman, Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, Commissioner Henry Mitchell, Commissioner Kelly Robinson, Commissioner Terenia Carthen, and Commissioner Ann jones Batter. Thank you so much, uh, District Attorney Racine. So well-deserved, and, and also thank you for 
taking the time and also your entire staff for addressing the importance of uh, Crime Victims Week and just day to day what that means <clears throat> to address the needs of our crime victims here in Douglas County and uh, so and also for strengthening of uh, something or program that needs to to certainly uh, have great attention to at all times. You have uh, certainly um, <clears throat> presented some information to the Board of Commissioners that's worthy of uh, approving and I hope that and in my hopes this morning that we will all be on one accord. Uh, with that being said, Board of Commissioners, do you have any comments before I call the question? If there are no comments from the board, I'm going to move on with the Chair. question. Okay. Uh, Vice Chairman Robertson, you have the floor. Yes. I, I, good, good morning, Madam DA. Good morning. Good morning. I've got a question for you. So, su survivors, right? So, you know, I, I don't get a chance to spend a lot of time on your side of, of the fence, as we say, but uh, from your office or is it in the community? What type of support do we provide survivors? I know as they go through trials and they, 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 they it could be short and long and but but what does that entail? I mean, can you give us a look? I mean, I guess we all look at law and order, but can you give us a real world perspective on what that is and, and what that means, please? First, I appreciate the, the recognition that law and order is not necessarily real world, um, <laughs> which is an eternal struggle for prosecutors. However, I will say that when talking about the survivors that we have in our community that have endured horrific crimes, um, the first step that we do is through our advocates is we assess what their needs may be. And so it depends, it's as individualized as the person who's coming through that process. Sometimes it may be resources with foundational needs such as housing, um, such as food assistance. Um, things that just very basic needs. Sometimes it will be with emotional resources, therapeutic support, um, mental health support. And so obviously our office has uh, restrictions as to what we can do and we recognize that and we're humble enough to know that, which is why we continuously partner with service providers in our community to help us to ensure that our victims receive a holistic approach when they are going through the criminal justice system and that they are receiving the services they need to truly uh, be restored from the crimes that they have endured. And so that is our approach by having really robust connections with our community partners as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, you. Thank you so much. Board of Commissioners, I will call the question if there are no other comments this time. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the uh, proclamation uh, addressing crime victims' rights week in Douglas County? So moved. Right at all. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Madam Clerk, yes. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote, Board of Commissioners, and the motion carries, and congratulations uh, to our <clears throat> district attorney, uh, Dahlia Racine, and we appreciate all the hard work that you and your staff are providing here in Douglas County, not only related to crimes, victims, right, but everything that you do to protect the judicial system and also the citizens here in Douglas County. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to, um, we have a new business item, and um, it's tab number six. Authorization for the chairman to execute an employment agreement with Alexandro Bentoncourt as information services director. Do we have a motion to approve, Board of Commissioners? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Board of Commissioners, please prepare to cast your votes. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, we have a 5-0 um, vote and a unanimous vote and the motion carries Board of Commissioners. Thank you so much. We're going to move on Board of Commissioners. We have a business item. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I, 
I was just, my apologies. But, hey. Was this a part of new business? Am I correct? I no, the, 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 the motion we just, the motion we just, uh, the, the agenda item just a moment ago. Was that new business? It was, that yeah, was new business. It was new business. Yes. Okay, yeah, I, I just want to, to actually to uh, make a motion to move to uh, the agenda item on the new business, which is the um, this Comcast sales order that we talked about yesterday, to move that under new business before we get out of new business. So um, my apologies, I, I, sh I should have came in before you did that 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 particular one, and I just missed it by by one. I didn't want you to go into the uh, any other business until we kind of get that one back on the agenda, and which is the sales order that we talked about yesterday that we we moved out of the IT to kind of so uh, I guess I should make a motion to um, move that back into the uh, on the agenda under new business if we could please. and that would be a motion I guess okay so move we have a uh, uh, second agenda. second okay. move onto agenda okay we have a motion and second all in uh, favor of board of commissioners just certain that this is manual I'm going to call you district please respond accordingly uh, district one Yes, I mute my yes. <laughs> <laughs> District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. And Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote to uh, bring this item back, uh, place it back on the agenda regarding Comcast. Okay. Um, and, and I guess if you want me to take it from there, Madam Chair, are you? Yeah, you, yeah, I want you to take it because I don't have the. Okay, the I got you. So, so um, I don't know, is Ken on the line with us? Ken, are you here? I, I am commissioner. Okay, and and uh, what we're trying to do though is to authorize uh, the approval of a change order from Comcast uh, Master Services, amended to the services to the new senior citizen center and the upgrade of the uh, uh, infrastructure to be uh, uh, fiber and fiber optics to 15 current sites for a cost of I think about 440 per month. Mm -hmm. Recommend. Yeah. Okay, but 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 before we, I'm just trying to get them ahead of the, the agenda, yeah. if I can. So, but before you want me, you, um, you want me to read the agenda item? If, if no? you would, if you would, okay. please, sir. And that way, and then what we need to also have um, uh, the gentleman come on and actually talk about it before we can, so we can have a whole discussion about. It. Okay, there we go. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, so the agenda item was authorization to approve a change order to the Comcast Master Services Agreement to add services to the new senior center and to upgrade the infrastructure to be wholly fiber optics for 15 current sites for a cost of 440 per month as recommended by the technology committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. And I guess at this point we'll have uh, Lou, you want to kind of speak to this to this item? Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so back last year, um, we went to Comcast and, um, right now we have coax in, in multiple locations and those, those tend to have issues when residential, um, customers have issues. It affects our fire department and all those other locations that don't have fiber. Mm -hmm. So when we went to them, um, right now our, our current speeds are like 10 megs. Um, we went and we negotiated higher speeds, better, better technology as far as going from coax to fiber. Um, so we're increasing our speed from 10 megabits to 50 megs and we're, um, getting the better technology with that. And it's only costing us, um, like I said, an, ad an additional 440 but in that 440, we're also adding a new senior center um, at 7217 Grover Lake Road in Lithia Springs. Mm -hmm. um, Comcast is, is eating, I think it was like $180,000 of um, investment mm -hmm. and because we already had a relationship with them. Um, and that's it. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I know the uh, vice chair of technology is on. I don't know if she has any comments to add to this. Well, I wondered yesterday when we uh, 
tabled it. <laughs> was it yesterday that we tabled yes, it? Yes, ma'am. We didn't have anybody from uh, IT, the IT department, to speak on it, and I couldn't remember all the details to it, so I, I didn't say anything. And, 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 I, and I apologize, Ann, and I should have spoke up. I thought that it was already clear to move it to a later date until I spoke with the gentleman, until I spoke with these guys later that day, and I went like, oh, no, this, this has to be done today. So, right. but thank you guys for to this board for actually allowing us to kind of come back and talk before you guys. But yes, Ann, this is that same agenda item that we spoke about two meetings or so ago. I just could not remember all the details to it mm -hmm. at the time that uh, it was brought up to table. So um, I thought maybe I started to ask if it was time sensitive. But yes, it, it was. It is definitely time sensitive and a lot. In the um, technology committee, we we told Comcast that we would have something. For, um, it would go in front of the whole board um, by by um, April sixth. Right, this meeting. Because yes. otherwise, we would lose that funding um, of the hundred and eighty five thousand, hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Well, we we really should have had somebody from IT uh, at our work session tomorrow. That could have, I mean, yesterday that could have <laughs> straightened us out on this. But anyway, it, it's okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank okay. you. All right. Just want to make sure, and that that would have been him, and just FYI. Yeah, that was that was me. I, I was sick I'm yesterday. Sick. Yeah. I, I, my apologies. I I, I just okay. I, I thought that. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Hey, Commissioner Mitchell, can I add to what Rule said? If you would, please, sir. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, at the technology committee's request, we've been working with Ruel and as well as Comcast. And so what this is, and it, it's in the, the the agenda item, it's really a, I'm calling it a change order, it's really a sales order where we're adding something and what we all will have from uh, uh, Comcast is something we'll be taking away. So it looks like a net new 4,000 some, some odd dollars, but actually it's a change in monthly subscription of about 400 and something dollars because once the fiber goes in and the coax goes out, we will we'll have in his hands before we ever agree to execute anything, something that deletes a current service uh, order or sales order. So it's not really, it's, it's in the nature of a contract, but it's really an order form. I will right. tell you that what I've told Ruel and, and Commissioner Mitchell uh, in my discussion with Comcast, Comcast is willing to work with us because essentially they're providing 180000 roughly in capital improvements, but they're getting back a subscription ad for 37 months, and we told them there's a little bit of problem about the length of that, but there's a provision in Georgia law that if we write it a certain way, I think we can get by it. They're having their legal look at it. We talked to Pam today from Comcast, and Pam said, look, if y'all can approve it subject to final legal review, we'll get the lawyers together to try to work out the language. So the hitch is, you're subscribing for a period of time that exceeds what is normally legally allowed. There's some ways we can write that that would allow this to occur, but those have not been worked out because Comcast needed more time, essentially. But they needed more time with their legal department, but not more time on the funding part. That's why this is critical. Either we move it yay or nay today. But I wanted you all to know why you really don't have a contract in front of you. It's really a sales order with terms on it, and some of those terms we're having to negotiate. Correct. And, and can to add, though, we, we're actually even approving this will give us time to go through the legal side of it as well. So just FYI, so everybody understand that even though approving this, it, it still has to go through the, what I call the legal hurdles with Ken to verify and out if that would it becomes and all that good stuff. So uh, just want us to, so we'll be we're fully aware. Uh, am I correct in that statement, Ken? Ken? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. I think as it currently reads, it needs some fine tuning to make it technically legal and they've agreed to look at it. The problem is they can't get an answer today on that, but they've agreed to hold the funds if we approve subject to that being worked out. But I, I wanted not to mislead this board. Essentially, essentially the MSA, when it expires, this will continue on for the period of time while we pay it. Now, uh, y'all just need to know that, but we're fine with if they will make some, a couple minor adjustments to the sales order, we feel like we can get this done legally. 
Understood, understood. And and we, we were, you know, time sensitive from the mere fact that the dollars and cents that's wrapped around this. So uh, it looks like I see a hand from um, Commissioner Carthen, if you would, please. Thank you. So I think this question is probably to you then, Attorney Bernard. So the MSA, the Mutual Service Agreement that you're speaking of, what is the exp um, the expiration date on that and when will this date pick up? And then my part B to that question is, what is the total impact to the budget and exactly have we budgeted for it and where is it coming from? So I yep. understand that we are already paying this service and it will be an addition to and we're getting a better deal because obviously they're going to put the infrastructure in so that we can pick up everything. So well, I got that part. My part yeah. now is the money, the expiration date, and when this new contract, if this um, is passed, will start. Well, I, I will try to answer that, Commissioner Carson. I may need Royal to jump in or Commissioner Mitchell. Mm -hmm. So the MSA expires this September. This is essentially an amendment to it on this particular uh, platform that will continue on. So the MSA will need to be renegotiated and the technology committee is aware of that. Mm -hmm. Separate, separately, the Comcast franchise agreement will need to be renegotiated and the technology committee is aware of that. This is sort of a sales form that has its own life that will outlive the MSA and that's the concern that we have about how does it get out. Now, from Ruel's perspective and talking with Comcast this morning in a conference call, Y'all already pay a little over $4,000 per month for the services you're getting, as I understand it. Yes. And they're going to send him a work order with a disconnect that will delete some of those charges. This okay. will replace it. And so your actual impact is a little over $400-something a month to the budget, as I understand, from Rural. Rural, is that correct? That is correct. And remember, we're, we're bringing the new senior center online, so it's actually less than 400 bucks, But... Because we're bringing a new senior center online, that would have been like an additional, um, I think, 305 bucks a month. But because we're, we're getting fiber, it's going to be $440.92 um, extra. So for all, for all sites. Correct. Right. Right. No, 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 total, total, total. Yeah. total. So we're going to be, we're going to do a cancellation on the coax side, get the fiber up. So say we're paying, um, I think it's 4000 I'm trying to get the number. It, it will increase by only $440 a month. Well, what the, what the commissioner wants to know, though, too, I think, is do you have the money already in your budget? Okay, or do let me, you need a budget well, amendment? Well, that, um, yeah. I'll, I'll turn, yeah. um, Commissioner Mitchell. Um, right. and, 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 I'll, and I'll jump in and, and, and calculate that. It, it's not budgeted for, but I, my numbers calculating and the operational cost of the senior citizen center, I think that's more than enough to kind of cover that cost. Right. And that with that particular number, when we make the change from coaxial to, um, fiber. to fiber. So, so, so I think we're fine in the, in the numbers game as to what we got, can we uh, pay for it? But it will need to be budgeted on the senior citizens tab, if that right. makes sense, down the road. But I think we should be more than have more than enough funding to kind of cover it until we get to that true budgetary item that will now be a part of Dr. Gilchrist's budget down the road. Yes, correct. And I don't okay. know if that, that if that explains it enough, uh, Commissioner Carthen. I mean, it 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 gets me to where I I hear we will put it in her budget if it's not already there, but it should be enough to cover it. My oh, actual is there. Hold on, Commissioner. Oh, okay. 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 My, my my thought to this is while we're in there. Um, if we can get PGV Sam data, since he is familiar with making sure that most governments are, are you know, paying, you know, a reasonable amount for those type of services, since we're already looking at this, because he's looking right. at other things like our phone service and yes. all of that. Yes. Yeah, if we could, you know, kind of bring him in, loop him in just to make sure that we're getting the best possible bang for our buck. Not that I don't trust you, Ruel. I know you did a great job and I'm <laughs> definitely on board. We definitely need the fiber versus the coaxial, but let's just make sure that we are, you know, dotting out our I's and crossing out our T's. And since we already got PGV in the mix, it won't hurt for them to look at it and give you their opinion on it. 
and Commissioner Carthen, I totally yep. agree with that. Okay. And, and, okay. and absolutely 100% that he should be a part of this, knowing what that is and where we could do some cost cutting, savings, measurement, blah, blah, blah. So I totally agree with you 110%. Right. So absolutely. Right. But thank you. But I yield back. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the Mr. board? Mr. Robinson. Okay. Go right ahead, sir. Thank you. All right. So, um, um, I think uh, I, I'm only involved in this on the peripheral, and you know, obviously I observe from afar. My question is: I heard you keep saying 14, 15 sites. I don't know what that means, but leave it there. Um, um, 5G, G5, whatever it is. I think, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, we had this conversation, which is like, okay, I get fiber. I also get the area that we're doing was part of that federal mandate that says that we had, you know, this is supposed to be an opportunity area for 5G. Uh, and so I, I want to know, did that conversation come up as I suggested that it should have? That's the second one. Third one is, okay, you got a community center. You, you I'm, I'm like, okay, is, are y'all looking at just transactionally with these two buildings or is there a bigger picture that like, how y'all gonna do this? And this takes me to my fourth point, which is I, I'm still, and it may not be Comcast issue. I'm just unimpressed with just bandwidth. Um, with the, all these Zooms and stuff, and I know the citizens see it and stuff be dropping, and it's just, uh, I, I, I mean, so I, I've got to, when I hear that we're wiring stuff, like, okay, I hope it's better than what we're doing, and I get the nickels and dimes. I'm about functionality. We can afford it. The question is, but is it, is it, is it, is it functional? And if we're going to put money into the infrastructure, so again, I, I get it, but I, and this, this really shouldn't be you guys, it really should be Comcast should be here. All right, so this is my, 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 my direct questions are more for them to say, okay, now what are we buying? You guys don't have to advocate for me. I got it. I got you. But, it's, but, but what are we doing here? Where are y'all at Comcast? You remember, I went to Washington. I talked to Senator Eisen. I talked to Congressman Scott. I'm like, can you remember all that? Without, okay, this mandate and all of our, you know, they're taking our right away. Like, okay, so where are we at two years ago, two years later? And so, I mean, so, you know, these guys was hitting us up, having those meetings and stuff, saying, hey, y'all need to move on this by October 1st. Like, okay, so where were we again? So I, I, I guess, um, again, back to big picture, well, this is transactional to me. I get it. Um, I, I think I, I won't belabor this because we got other items we got to get to. Um, I, I just want to, um, and again, this was probably better done in the work session than now, because this really should be a voting moment. And I know we're, we're hashing out something that, that was appropriately done yesterday, but I'm going to, um, um, I don't think you have really have the answer. Don't, don't box yourself if you, you don't have the answer to my questions, but it's something that I, I, I would like to know. So as a condition for my vote, um, Madam Clerk, make sure we get to that. I want an answer from Comcast on the four things I just mentioned. G5, other locations, bandwidth, etc. Can you do that? Make sure that that is done. This is not for you, Commissioner Mitchell, nor Royal, but somebody needs to reach out to them and ensure I get my questions answered um, for a bigger picture, but not to hold up this vote. Um, I yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. And, and, and uh, Commissioner, just to, to answer at least a portion of your question, and Royal, I think we that 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 shouldn't be a problem with getting Comcast representative in front of us in front of right. the board to, to answer some of the questions that the vice chairman you know has. So that that I, one, that's not. An I could answer part of the, the the bandwidth. I don't know if it, if it's big picture, but I could answer as far as Douglas County. One of the part of the negotiate negotiation that we did was. Um, right now, we, we have 100 megs up, 100 megs down. Part of this, this, this new process, not only are we increasing our bandwidth by five in all the, the locations or all the, when they, when they talked about sites, we're talking about fire department, all of our remote sites outside of the courthouse, that's how we attach to them. That's how they get on our, our internet. That's how they get go through our firewall. That's how they get phone services and stuff like that. Um, we're also, we also negotiated, um, higher bandwidth, we're going from 100 megs up and down to 500 megs because we have remote users now. So we've increased um, not just our bandwidth to our remote locations, we increased our internet speed, or we will in increase our internet speed from 100 megs to 500 megs. And like I said, just for that additional four, 440 bucks for the month. So we increased it by five and we, incre we basically, um, 
did the same thing on on our internet connection as well. Um, as far as big picture, I think that when Comcast makes that that investment in um, that 180,000, it actually benefits the community around it because if they're running fiber to say, for example, um, let me look at one of the locations, um, South Street Water Road and Lithia Springs. Now that they have fiber in that neighborhood, they could provide fiber to um, seniors in the neighborhood or other businesses in the neighborhood. So it's beneficial for, when, for, for them to invest in us and it will benefit the neighborhood on, on a whole. So I hope that I answered. And, and we will get Comcast here to, to, to speak um, to the board as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, 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 I appreciate the, the, the technical, but it was, um, thank you. Um, just, no just thank you. I, 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 want it, I don't want you to, you know, don't put yourself in representing um, a partner that we're about to negotiate. You're not their sales agent. I yes. want to hear from them. Yes, sir. They've got to come before us, and I'm like, okay, now what are we about to go do? And so I, I appreciate, I know, I mean, I appreciate you filling in, and, and that was fine, but that, that's not what I was looking for. I mean, when we do contracts like this with these major partners, I mean, go back to these are chamber friends. I mean, where where, where are they at? They just throw contracts over the wall, and we we just sign up on task orders. We make everybody else grill through fifteen minutes. Well, where's the courtesy that you're our partner to help us understand? You you we're talking about baking fourteen twenty eight million in infrastructure money coming down, and IT and y'all ain't in the room. They're not aware of where we are right now, that we need some advisement from our strategic partners. I got y'all. It's just like, where are they at? We're, 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 again, we sit in these chamber lunches. We ain't did it in a while, but again, okay, well, where is y'all when we really need you? In these moments right here, we're talking about strategic priorities and real investment. Like, okay, so this is a perfect time. Where are they at? This is when you see that moment right here. You can help shape <laughs> long-term capital planning conversations and stuff like, okay, we're talking about infrastructure. And again, you guys did a good job. I appreciate it. We're all partners. We're on the same team. But I, again, I have a, a, a bigger expectation of our partners um, that are supposed to be here. And I, I just think I, I'm looking more, um, more contribution. So anyway, let's move on. Yeah, thank I you, sir. You. Commissioner Mitchell, we're good. Again, yeah, we're good. Yes. And thank you. Thank, thank you, Vice Chairman Robinson. So, so Royal, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of leave it there. Uh, yes, but, but, down the road, we'll definitely kind of have our partners, Comcast, come in at least present to the board and talk about, because there's some other projects that are out there along with Comcast that need to be kind of addressed. Uh, any other comments or questions from the board? Okay, so Madam Chair, I guess at this point, um, I guess we'd like to, uh, you know, formulate the motion that would, um, and Ken, I don't know if you want to read the motion that will formulate this so we can kind of move this item forward from the uh, from new business and make sure we keep the legal part of it as a part of this sure. uh, issue. Okay, so can it- I, I'm a, I'll try. Um, Commissioner, <laughs> uh, da, 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 I got it up just a second. Okay. Uh, if, if you're asking uh, for a, a motion to approve authorization for change order to the Comcast Master Service Agreement to add services to the new senior center and to upgrade the infrastructure to be wholly fiber optics for 15 current sites for a cost of 440 per month additional as recommended by the Technology Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. And that would be the motion that we would like to move forward with Madam Chair. So. Okay, Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. Um, please, we will cast our votes uh, verbally when I call your district. Please respond accordingly. District 1? Yes. District 2? Approved. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. Chairman, yes, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, for leading this effort. And then, Ruel, uh, thank you to Mr. Douglas for coming in, providing insight. And thank we look forward to. Here. You're welcome, thank Commissioner. You. All right. Well, we're going to move on, Board of Commissioners, to our business item, which is tab number seven, is authorization to approve 2021 budget improvement request BRR and amend the 2021 general fund budget. 
board of commissioners uh, before this morning, uh, before we even, I even call the question, I would like to thank the finance committee for shaping uh, and forming the March uh, budget improvement request that will uh, come before you this morning. I would like to give special uh, thanks to uh, our chief financial advisor, Mr. David uh, David Corbin, Corbin, and also our uh, interim director, Rosalind Miller, for doing an extraordinary job uh, packaging the recommendation that will become uh, come before you this morning. Um, I believe the the package will address um, the entire board's desires uh, on a collective basis. We all had uh, all individual uh, desires and ask, and I certainly appreciate what uh, David Corbin, Corbin and also Rosalind have done to certainly bring something before you this morning in terms of the recommendation. Uh, with no further ado, uh, Mr. Corbin, are you on the line? And if you do, I would uh, ask that the Board of Commissioners give you or provide you with their undivided attention this morning and to allow you to discuss the brevity of this uh, uh, recommendation that you have that you're bringing before us and then of course certainly we'll open it up I will open the floor for the Board of Commissioners to respond if they have any questions for you um, with no further ado I would like to bring on Mr. David Corbin Mr. Corbin are you there Rosalind Miller are you there yes madam chair I am and um, David was jumping on but um can you can you call him and then i can just because i know he had a presentation if you don't okay. mind i saw him earlier he board of commissioners if you could just was bear it, with us um i have the worksheet was it the um full worksheet yes okay. I, I believe he wanted to i wanted him if he could to speak and then you as well yes. okay Okay, he's having IT issues, but he is trying to join. Okay. Yeah, well, just, just as, as we pause, Madam Chair, it's okay. I mean, to, to the previous question, to what Comcast and all I'm working on, I know we've now moved into this this online world, and it's not going to go backward. It'll probably be a, a hybrid source for the next 100 years, per se. Uh, but the, 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 the citizen experience, new and ours, is just, while I'm, I'm ready to embrace it, it's just the choppiness, the inconsistency, um, it, 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 it has an impact to a certain extent on our quality of, of work. And I, I'm just hopeful that these big service providers um, are putting in the money um, that we know that they're getting um, from the federal community to make this work for us, right? I mean, but, I mean, in other words, we'll pay for our services, our subscriptions, but are they investing in their organization? Are they investing in the cable? Are they upgrading? Are they getting us to the, the 5G and the things that they, that they sell on the commercials? But it's like, are you, are you really committed to it? Are you getting out into the rural areas that you said you were going to do? Uh, and because again, it's like I'm I'm good with this, but it's like I mean sometimes I can't hear people, sometimes I miss things, and it, it breaks momentum and it, it it sort of takes away just a little bit. But again, I uh, I, I think it's something that I I'm hopeful that my peers and the technology committee will really like look we we got to get this right, and um you've got my support for willing to put money into that, but they they've got to talk to us, talk to us. All right, I was just buying time, I'm sure. So okay. is Dave okay. here? Yeah. Yeah, he's here. Yeah. Uh, Board of Commissioners, once again, I, I thank you for your time and attention and wanted to just uh, uh, certainly uh, David Corbin, who's our chief financial advisor this morning, has done an extra extraordinary job of packaging a recommendation for the Board of Commissioners. Again, I would like to extend appreciation to the Finance Committee for framing uh, the budget uh, improvement request, but of course our uh, chief financial advisor is certainly has a ben bandwidth of knowledge and he's creative and he was a, uh, certainly has done a very good job of accommodating and uh, addressing all the needs and ask of each one of the board members this morning. So I do ask that you provide your undivided attention for our chief advi uh, financial advisor to allow him to just share what his thoughts are uh, regarding the uh, budget improvement request. And, but I want to remind uh, you and also the citizens that this is uh, this budget in, uh, coming back in March, revisiting budget in, uh, improvement request is certainly 
a creative uh, mode uh, that has happened uh, during my administration. Uh, I believe uh, creativity sometimes is good and maybe not so good, but we want to look at it and we want to just grab this time for, our, um, for an opportunity for us to address some needs, uh, if possible, uh, that uh, for this organization, if we can. And uh, certainly March is our magic uh, month. It allows us to close our books and to see where we stand financially. So with no further ado, I would like uh, David Corbin, if you could lead the discussion, and certainly Rosalind Miller will follow with him as well. She will join us. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the floor. Uh, let me see where to start. I mean, uh, uh, basically what I, have tried to do over the last 24 hours since our work session is to sit down with, with many of you and talk about the actual monies and funds that are available um, that, have, that are brought, have been brought before you. Um, let me just make real one side comment in terms of the March revisits and the creativity process. One, one thing that we have learned over the last couple of years is planning is important. We, we took that back in 2016 from the rating agencies uh, because of the planning process that y'all have put in place uh, and we've weathered a pandemic in, I think, in pretty good financial shape and, and the board has made a commitment to making sure that the county is committed to staying financially stable. Having said that, uh, the other thing that is always good about a financial plan is having some ability to be flexible and at the same time understanding that things change um, uh, very quickly at times, but you, you know we've got sufficient resources, and I think uh, brought to the brought to bear to be able to deal with whatever comes up. Having said all that, you we talked yesterday about the funds that you have available uh, based on your policies that can be earmarked um, into this particular budget. Uh, those that are earmarked for capital outlay and your overall fund balance, which is which is um, pretty strong at this point. Uh, particularly given that you've gone through a, 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 a very challenging times, you know, nationally. So having said that, we took all the improvement requests that have come before the board, uh, and Rosalind and I have tried to, at least we want to illustrate how all of these things can be done uh, in such a manner. That doesn't mean that you agree with them all. I mean, clearly that's for debate, but I at least wanted to show you a template of what it would look like, um, assuming that you wanted to do everything that was on the table. Rosalind, can you put up the revised list? Of okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Hello. Hello. It's up. I'm, is it up? <clears throat> you see my screen? No, I don't, I'm not seeing it right now. Okay. I can see it, Rosalind. Okay. Can see it you well. can see it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm the only one that can see, and I may be having some technical difficulties, and I apologize in advance. But uh, uh, effectively, you can see the list there. I, I'm going off of, of memory, but uh, we've broken down. Uh, categories into those that are recurring or operating costs. Okay, I can see it now. Uh, you've had two point, approximately 2.7 million uh, fund balance uh, that could be spent on recurring operating costs, and you've got another 3 million approximately that could be spent on uh, capital outlay items per the policy. And so we basically divided the budget improvement request into those two categories as, as defined there, as you can see. Which leaves balances, very small balances, in, 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 in both of them, but nevertheless gets every one of the projects uh, that have been discussed by all of you in some form or fashion brought forth on the table. And so I think it's it's now just a matter of whether or not you want to move forward with those. I think you are capable of doing all of those projects in the manner that's set forth, and have sufficient reserves uh, available to deal with other issues that may pop up. Uh, throughout the rest of the year and going forward. And I'm, again, I can go through the list individually or we, we can, uh, I'm, I'm glad to answer any questions for what may be on here. 
If you could, Chief Financial Advisor, please just review the uh, each line by line individually. Just allow. Sure, sure. So let's let's start. Yes, ma'am. So let's start with the operating side. Those costs that are have been deemed as being recurring and that will recur going forward. That will occur going forward every year unless changed otherwise. Uh, the first uh, point of discussion is number one, which is the restoration of the eight and a quarter percent cut that all departments experienced. Um, that totals about approximately 1.7. $1.8 million, which will be put back into the individual operating budgets. Uh, Veterans Court uh, as a project um, that Vice Chair has discussed uh, as recurring costs going forward. Litter removal contract um, for 100000 Mowing contract at three times a year, 300000 uh, We have the uh, legal services we're, we're recommending you restore some of the funding um, uh, into the legal services account because of ongoing claims and things related to the county at 125000 And there's a tax commissioner cost of administration of 150000 All of those two items are recurring by nature and they total $2.6 million, uh, which leaves approximately $89,000 uh, in recurring um, revenues and recurring expenses that could be accommodated into that account uh, for future purposes. The second column would be um, the fund balance items that relate to your capital outlay, one-time purchases or one-time contributions to projects. Right now, they consist of a couple, several items. Primarily, we'll start off with the, the corner. Uh, the corner coroner is looking for fencing related to the property that they will be moving into at $34,580. We've got four uh, new vehicles for the coroner to purchase at $152,000. The equipment for those vehicles approximates, approximately is approximately $100,000. Uh, we have the Department of Driver Services site at $650,000. Uh, the, 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 the site has already been purchased. We hope, uh, Madam Chair, again, this was not on the original list, but we're hoping that at some point, uh, once that all gets cleared up, we may go back and do a lease facility, which will reimburse the county for that amount. So that would be put back into the capital outlay fund. Um, we have the $500,000 that have been designated to go directly to the sheriff, uh, back into his budget to allow him to purchase cars. Uh, that will be combined with the 627,000 that he will be getting out of the eight and a quarter percent cut, plus the 500,000 that he has sitting, uh, that he had offered up for uh, a contribution to equipping his cars. So that will take him to a total of approximately a million 627 available for him to, to acquire cars out of his own budget. 514,000, uh, which is line 13, has been designated to go to the tax commissioner to, uh, to uh, implement the Tyler Technology software. And again, that, that is not just for him. I think GIS has a portion of that. And certainly the, the appraiser, the assessor's office is, is um, um, also uh, receiving the benefit of that 514,000. The last item that we added recently were some uh, project renovations in Pumpkin Town, totaling $350,000. So again, you have $3 million available in the capital outlay fund per the policy. You have 697,000 remaining after those items, if and, if and when those items are approved as listed. You, we, we hope again, and it's not so much a hope, if the decision is made to work out a longer term lease uh, with the DDS facility that 650 of that uh, sometime in 2021 will be placed back into the capital outlay fund, as well as any other funds that we've already expended uh, on the DDS, on the, on the new DDS site. And that's, that's pretty much, uh, I think that pretty much summarizes what we've done here. And we would ask that um, you consider these items, and we're, we're here. I'm here to discuss any any particular item you may want to want to talk about. 
Okay, uh, thank you so much, Chief Financial Advisor. If you could just share with the Board of Commissioners what our remaining um, unrestricted fund balance is. I'm quite sure that's a uh, yeah, question. Assuming, assuming all of these items have been approved or before that. Right now it's $22 million. That's about $21.8 $21 million is the unrestricted fund balance today. We'll go back. Thank you, Rosalind. So it's $21.8 million today. Um, it will be 16, assuming that we, it, it's, you know, unrestricted about, it will be approximately $16 million or 16% of fund balance. Your policy is 10. Right, correct. And I believe our, our fiscal uh, policy reform indicated uh, this year would be 10 or 11%. I believe we, but we have 16% even after we've uh, addressed, if these items are approved and addressed. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Well, um, oh. certainly, Roslyn, do you have anything you want to add? I know our Chief Financial Officer, great job. Thank you so much uh, for addressing your, all the Board of Commissioners' request and concern in trying to, as you package this uh, proposal. Uh, Roslyn Miller, do you have anything to add before I certainly open up with my board to just uh, have questions and if you all could respond to their questions? Roslyn, do you have anything to add at this time? No. I'm okay. just here um, for any questions, Madam Chair. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Board of Commissioners, certainly you have uh, actually seen and heard the proposal uh, brought forth by um, David uh, Corbin, who is our Chief Financial Advisor, and, uh, packaged along with Rosalind Miller. They've spent an enormous amount of time moving numbers around to accommodate the request of this entire board and making sure that we remain fiscally sound in, uh, in, in our with our reserves which uh, I, I want to thank them and commend them for their efforts. At this time, Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions before I call the question? Okay. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, do we have- Madam Chair. Okay, Commissioner Mitchell. I, I just have just one question though. I, 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 I'm just trying to, so, so David, just one thing that I, first of all, I think this, this is at least workable, I guess I would say. Um, and I'm just missing one thing here, just going back to the, um, let's see, the sheriff, and I apologize, you know, because we're just not seeing this and trying to digest these numbers and everything else. Okay, there was like three line items from the, the tax commissioner's layout, um, and I think that may have been what I'm missing is like 10-4 on the, I'm assuming maybe the car allowance or something. Am I missing something there? Yeah, the car the car allowance has been removed. The, 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 the tax okay. commissioner has um, has we removed it. Okay, okay. So, we discussed it, and that's been removed. Yes, sir. Okay. Can we add that back since we're gonna package this thing up and get this all? We want to kind of make everybody whole. I see, and I see that number. We want to make everybody a part of this whole layout. Let's let's put that back in the air, and and because it's not gonna be that big of a hit. You know what I'm saying? So that that minuscule as to what we're dealing with. So that will complete, I guess, what I call this package deal versus, um, cause I don't, I'm not missing anything else that I can foresee. Cause I see the corner, I see the sheriff. And I apologize, let me, I'm trying to see it as I, in real time as you guys are doing. So if we put that number in, if you put that number back in, I don't know if, if, if you guys can put that number just to see what would it take? Well, it, it will, so I'm gonna be, um, it's less than five thousand dollars, so it will go into the recurring column. I mean, without okay. it, yeah, it just it takes it down to two. It, it, just I right. can tell you right off, your ending balance would, would be eighty. Let's let's eighty three thousand five hundred ninety one dollars. And that's not, that's what I said. It's minuscule. That's why I said I, I thought it was ten thousand four, but I may be off. No, it's, it's, uh, it's forty eight hundred dollars annually. I think it was the the, the previous uh, pr proposal was four hundred dollars per month. Uh, at $4,800 a year. Okay, okay. If we can just mathematically, and thanks for the numbers, and I'm doing my little math here too, though. Okay, so, uh, okay, um, let's put that number back. Outside of that, I'm, I, you know, and I'm looking at this, and I know my colleagues are probably doing the same thing. Uh, let's put that number back and, and accommodate that number. Outside of that, I'm going to continue looking and, and digesting these numbers as we do this. So I want to hold up the 
the board from anybody else may have any other comments. I think I saw Commissioner Geiger had a couple of comments as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna yield the floor for now until I can at least do the rest of my math. But that'll if, if that part will be a bit added a, in addition to outside of that, I think I can live with what we're moving to. So go right ahead. I yield. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Commissioner uh, Geider, I believe that's your hand. I can't see your actual name. Commissioner Geider, is that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, I want to correct you. This did not come out of our um, our uh, finance committee. Uh, this is the first time I've seen some of these items on this list. Um, we've never talked about Pumpkin Town renovations of, at $350,000. Um, we uh, just yesterday, yesterday afternoon, when you and I talked, you said all we were going to be voting on was the uh, to restore the 8.25 budget cuts, the sheriff's cars. And also the sheriff's cars, this takes the 35 cars down to 25 or less, depending on the prices of the car, I guess. And um, then the software, software only for the tax commissioner. So I don't know what in the world we're supposed to do when we're, everything changes from one conversation to the next. But I did not endorse this. I want it on the record. I had nothing to do with uh, all these charges on here that's been added. But um, we should have stuck to the original, to the original list. Um, the summary of uh, uh, the uh, summary to revisit. And that was right around $3 million for everything, for everything. And since then, a lot of stuff has been put in there that was never on the list. Um, and then now, even since yesterday, <laughs> we've added some things back on the list. So this is no way to do a budget. I apologize to the public. I know it's confusing to y'all because if I sit on a committee and then I'm not even told that something's been added to it or changed about the vote, then I don't need to be sitting on that committee and I hereby resign from it. I cannot move forward if I'm not kept in the loop. And then I'm told one thing at five o'clock yesterday and then I'm seeing something entirely different this morning. So uh, y'all just vote the way you want to. You're going to do it anyway, but I did not endorse this. And with that, I yield back. Thank you so much, Commissioner. If I may add, if you if you listening, if you listen to my opening comment, I was I said I would like to thank the Finance Committee for framing the budget. And of course, I said David Corbin is bringing forth some recommendations. He sent me, you and every board member a copy of this report last night. I did ask our chief financial advisor to call you and to review this because I received a call late last night as well. So I'm like you, this is all new to me, but of course I'm trying to look at it with an open mind. And yesterday I did explain to you that he has developed a column for capital outlay, which is uh, that still puts that fund balance reserves in within that $3 million uh, realms that we talked about because we were looking at fund balance reserves. The capital outlay is a recommendation from Moody's when we flew to New York or when I flew to New York in March of 2017, they indicated, and should I say the gurus or the experts at Wall Street say you need a capital outlay budget to allow you to address capital needs. We have capital needs in this county. You have corner cars that have over 200,000 to 200 to 200, to 250,000 miles on them. You have sheriff car. Well, I won't look at this. Let me look at what else. The sheriff cars, they're, they're about to fall down. They're capital items. So that's why I asked, I said, Commissioner, when I spoke to you yesterday, I said, now that capital outlay, we're not going to, that's not the, uh, this finance committee, we're not focusing on that. We're focusing on our fund balance reserves. We were given a $3 million window, and we've actually come under the $3 million. 
on the on the actual column that we could control, which is recurring expenses. The other expenses related to capital outlays are non recurring expenses, but you have to have those items in order to function. He did say on your driver services site project, again, the $650,000 will uh, actually come off and uh, that uh, will actually go back into the balance of that two. Uh, million nine hundred ninety eight thousand that's at the top he said because I believe that he was going to look at a leasing mechanism so I I tried to listen with an open mind actually he sent us all a copy of this uh, document last night certainly I wanted late. to make sure <clears throat> late last night and I talked to him this morning Correct. and I asked him what are we voting on and he said I don't know <coughs> oh, <really? So clears throat> but the pumpkin town renovations that wasn't on the list wait wait order guys. You, you <clears> but i will say wait, I'm sorry. wait, wait I will you're say. interrupting the chair you, that that was that, that was not respectful i was trying to hear where madam chair was going you yielded the floor don't do that well let she addressed me statement. she addressed let me finish. let let her finish though because i had the floor next so okay commissioner let me just and so that's what i'm saying i'm not sure what david shared with you this morning I'm trying to listen uh, and certainly I can circle back to David and ask why, you know, I'm not sure if you all had an opportunity to discuss the entire uh, budget and re improvement request list that we see here, but I didn't have an opportunity to speak with him. I just looked at it and understood what he did in terms of the columns because we did not provide enough time yesterday to allow him to even express that capital outlay column, what it means. This, what the finance committee looked at was actually our fund balance reserves, which we had $3 million to work with then. He did, he did uh, shave that down to 2.6, I'm sorry, 2.6 million. And you, yesterday, both you and I had heartburn because we said we were given a $3 million window. But it's very obvious that we, he made it by looking at, if you look at our bottom line, he still have ex excess left out of that two, Point six million dollars. He has eighty-eight thousand dollars remaining. So to Madam me, it's Chair, kind of very. May I let me, respond let me, let me to some finish. of the things you've said to me? Correct. May and I, I, okay. you're addressing some things that were not there when we discussed even the three million. The hundred fifty thousand for the tax commissioner wasn't there. And the hundred twenty-five thousand. Uh, well, there's there's several. There's a couple of things that was not there, but we didn't. We didn't address um, a lot of the capital outlay because we didn't know about the capital lay, outlay until yesterday. But while I would say that the purpose of a fund balance for capital outlay is to build a reserve for capital outlay, we're spending it as fast as we get it. So we're not doing anything but just spending more of the money. So, um, but never was the pump, pumping, pumpkin town renovation. It wasn't on there. Where do, why don't we keep adding instead of uh, sticking to our original list? And we can ad ad uh, address um, subsequent things down the road. We should have just stuck to our plan to begin with in fact, in the budget thing, um, the report or the uh, records and everything, when we uh, established the budget, it says no budget improvement request, parentheses, capital is going to be delayed till March 3rd. So um, we weren't going to address any capital. <clears throat> we keep changing our own rules. This right, is just I, this is a, a moving thing and nobody knows what we're even voting on. Um, I talked to Miss Mr. Corbin tonight. I mean this morning. It was the first time I talked to him. Uh, he sent it very late at last night. I didn't get to look at it last night. Um, so yeah, y'all are going to do what you, you want to do, but all you know how to do is to spend. Did you not hear the lady yesterday 
uh, Mr. Mrs. Back to say, why don't you keep spending? You just keep spending. And uh, you know, um, Chairman, that we never talked about the um, $150,000 um, contingency fund for the tax commissioner. And uh, we, dis we disregarded that. It was not talked about uh, even in our uh, budget when we were setting our revisits. It was uh, discarded. Y'all keep putting money or requests in. We might as well start all over. But uh, the sheriff is not getting but maybe 40 cars. I mean, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> 25 cars when he asks for uh, 35, he cannot use his operating budget to fund cars. Amen. You cannot use the operating budget to fund his cars. So um, he's going to be short from here on out. But anyway, and now I will yield the floor. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Again, I'll chime in as well. Again, this is my first time seeing this document as well. I ask this board to give your undivided attention to a recommendation that's coming before. Nothing is set in stone. Again, the Finance Committee, we have our Chief Financial Advisor and our Director of Finance who are just making recommendations, trying to address the challenges, uh, the, the, the request of this entire board, not just two members, which would be myself and you. We have an entire body that we are trying to address their needs and concerns. Nothing is set in stone today. We have not moved, I have not called a question. I asked the Board of Commissioners to take a look at this because David wanted to bring up our Chief Financial Advisor. I've asked him to look at it and make some recommendations and he did just that. We are, I, I see what you're saying when you say it's spending money, but you have items on here that you need to address such as the sheriff's cards. Is it a better, is it, should we lease or should we buy? The white papers that I researched said we need to buy the cars. And right now we are in a position to buy cars, not lease them. So I believe he has really looked at the strategy. I agree with you on the $150,000 for the tax commissioner. When I called you yesterday, it was three items to discuss. I'm just like you, I received all this information late last night call uh, David had some discussion just like you did and this and I just said we'll bring it forth so we can talk about it forth we have kicked the can long enough this county we have we we were not in a position to do anything you don't you don't your cars are falling down your your, your system your tax commission and it's not his system we have three people sharing the cost of that five hundred fourteen thousand dollars pumpkin town we've been talking about pumpkin town for five years since I've been in office uh, that pumpkin town is 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 the remnants from um, our previous vice chairman of this board, which is Mike Mulcair. We've been talking about pumpkin town for five years. We need to move. We're in a position to address some of these capital needs that we have, uh, capital outlays. Uh, certainly, we can load the bank up and just look at everything before us crumble. Our equipment is aging. We are aging. We need to address some of these uh, items that have been on the books for a long time. And I'm certainly, Commissioner, that I'm asking you to open your mind this morning and allow our chief financial advisor to, to, to present. And certainly when we call, when I call the question, everybody can take a position. Uh, with that being said, I believe you had the floor, Commissioner Robinson, and you didn't have the floor, but you had a question I believe you wanted to bring forth to yeah. our financial advisor. Chief Financial Advisor. I would like to join this conversation. I yes. mean, watching you two go, I'm like, okay, guys, can we get involved in this conversation? Correct. But, but, but that's the point. I think the public sees it like, oh, y'all got y'all sidebar going, and y'all know y'all got to get three votes. And in that, while you make recommendations, it's just that we all are equal votes. You, you don't advocate your, your vote to somebody else. You take a position. You need my support, then you need what I need to be on the table. We don't debate against ourselves. You have shaped this budget. You guys have done a great job. This is 99, we're, we're arguing one more time over a penny. 
right? And we're, we're going through all this. And, man, okay, all that ideology. This is a great package. Staff, you did a great job. It's mm -hmm. inclusive. Everybody voicing there. Yeah, there's some things in there you, you, you could be indifferent about, you don't like. But each one of us has sponsored something in there that absolutely we all support. We can be done with this in 10 minutes and be done. Right. Right. And we can move on. We can tie off the old and get ready for a new administrator and a new Douglas and move this forward. This is not hard. But but when when you if you if you pay attention to I was up last night. And of course, I wasn't in any of these conversations. So you know I'm going to weigh in. Right? Remember, Jeff, we hadn't talked. I had reached out to you, like, okay, y'all talk to everybody but me. I'm like, okay, now, how that going to play out? Right? Because my vote will matter. Right? So when, when, you, when, when Corbin took what y'all presented, y'all declared, we as a community, we're going to put this and we're going to vote tomorrow. Like, oh, y'all going to shotgun this. Oh, okay. You're going to have to get three votes. Right. Think about what you said, what was being said. We're gonna make this recommendation. We're gonna stick to the plan. But no, you need we 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 don't like it. We're gonna shape it. It's not a dictatorship. It's a democracy. Everybody, back up. You need Madam Carthen's vote. Well, whatever her interest is, she's gonna have to take into consideration. Whatever Commissioner Mitchell want to do, if he want to add that, he's gonna get to add it. That that's I mean, everybody's whole. It's not just my way and just because I got the title, nobody else exists. No, this is democracy. Right? Everybody's whole and everybody's secure about what they're looking at. And we can make this smooth. I actually like it. Corbin, y'all did a great job because you did the way it's supposed to be done. Take everybody's voice. Let them see themselves in this vision. It's inclusive. Right? It's a package. Right? It's like, okay, I, I, I can work with that, guys. We, we got some room. Yes, we made some real decisions. But there, there was, we carried the, those who voted for this budget and voted for the millage and voted for all the things that y'all are considering. Uh huh. You would even be in this place. So to be critical about spending, to Madam Chair's point, when we went to New York and we spent $5 million on that animal shelter out of the capital, uh, out of our operating budget, like we're trying to do the sheriff, like, gosh, you, you're repeating history. And that's what we put these policies in place to block it. And we put back what we call the capital transportation fund, which is now this capital. And it's funding itself by default. We put a floor. Do y'all not know this? This is beautiful. Oh, it played out perfect. I mean, you, you can't fault your financial hand. That's what I'm saying. What are we arguing about? What are y'all arguing about? That, that's between you two. Because we're sitting here like, okay, so this ain't no y'all thing. You know, that, that's the only thing I'm like, okay, who, who is y'all? Who is y'all? It's five of us. We're all equal. We all matter. Right? So at some point, you want, as Commissioner Mitchell said, you want to talk to us. Right? So that's when you got, you got, you got to mature as a board. Y'all have, have to rise up. You, you have to say, okay, guys, how, how, what do you think Congress does? What do you think about them conventions and stuff? We just sit at the House. They, they ain't got together. Now they got to go offline. You know what that bill's going to come out. Gosh, y do y'all not know what we do? This is what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to make the phone calls. The president does call those senators after meeting stuff. The General Assembly, yes. Why y'all acting new? That's the process. And staff is supposed to capture our voices and stuff and brings it back to us the next day. We ain't got no problem with y'all trying to process this overnight. I'm good at this. I, I know exactly what I'm voting on. I get it. I'm like, okay, that's what y'all present. I'm like, I, I can see it. Okay, sounds good. It's within margin. It ain't that hard. The rest of it is noise. But okay, all right, I made my point. I just because I, I just like, come on, guys, come back, come back to the middle. All right, so so I'm looking at this. Um, great job. Um, Again, you're right. There's some shaping. Um, the um, the Veterans Court, again, that was one that um, I ensured that some kind of way it fell off. Like, no, you better put that back on that. Now, that's my vote. Right? That's something that's recurring, and, I, I, you know, I, I give room. See, you, you can't take away somebody else's what their vote is. Right? It's small, but it still matters. Right? But it, it's a little soft, so I'm, I'm probably break that. Like, Henry, I'm going to wait to the end. I'm going to break that apart uh, because I don't think um, that all is needed there. So I may give some back. See, see, you, you pay attention. It's not always about a, a, a give. 
But again, I get some commissioners may be advocating for their district. They ain't going to sit here and vote for somebody else's interest and get what they need for their district. Like when, when I heard about pumpkin time, I was like, okay, I heard that was being negotiated. It's like, sounds good to me. You got the three just like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. You need to vote. You can't just present some said we just we, you got to go with this. This ain't puppet heads of old. We we, we can think. We won't do it that way, right? So that that's why having titles does not give you the power, right? You 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 got to talk to each other. You got to communicate. What you're seeing, obviously, you know. I'm like, okay, Mr. Chair, you're getting boxed over there. You you have to pick a side. Because it's like, okay, look, look at how she's talking about the chair. Like, wow, look at this. Like, well, we like, wait, wait a minute, y'all don't let us in on this. Now we're open minded. We came around between last night, what happened last night to this morning. Oh my goodness, it was like, huh. but this is beautiful. Staff did a wonderful job. That's the way it works. So here we are, and it seems like we, we've got an, an, an open honesty about, like, okay, all right, guys, we can get through this. But but you know, we don't have to make this hard. You know, and just. To, it's the tone sometimes. It, 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 it's just sort of pull up. You know, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, with, with Dr. Ennis, I mean, that, that prayer was like, okay, yeah, that's right. I, I just need to hear that this morning. All right. Come on, guys. It, this is a moderate. All we got to do is stay in the middle. This is this ain't far right, far left. This ain't no y'all versus us. No, it's not. It's inclusive. Sheriff gets what he wants. Coroner gets what she knows. Tax commission gets what she wants. The parks get what they want. I get what I want. Madam Chair, like everybody, what y'all were sponsoring. Is all that. So either we can be selfish that I get it and y'all don't get nothing. If I don't want y'all to have it, nobody gets it. We say, look, everybody, everybody, everybody get a plate. Quit being selfish. Everybody gets a plate. Whether it's big or little, doesn't matter. The fact is, like, well, what I'm focused on, it's it's small, but okay, it's all relative. But everybody gets to eat. Everybody gets made whole. And we move on. But, but we, we got to move on from this type of just attack. That 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 that's that that administration is gone now. It's t it, we, we, we got to come back to the middle and beat more. What, what did she say? What did she say? FDR, uh, fair, dig, you know, fairness, dignity and respect. Right. That, that that's we're, we're attacking each other versus the, the actual things that are on the table. The things on the table are. are um, they're all right. It, it's, it's like we didn't talk about this enough. Ain't no, it's called the vote. I mean, again, everybody's going to weigh in. I, I'm, I'm done because the next time I'm coming with conditions, of course, um, uh, for what I'm doing. But uh, for the most part, come on, guys. I'm sure you just, you know, get get through the process. I think we got another commissioner so needs to sort of weigh in, you know, with their opening. Uh, but we need to move on with this. Yeah. Uh, this should not be four hours. This should be, like I said, once you get us one round, one round of rebuttal, you know, just get on through this. But let's just respect everybody's position, because you you might you ain't gonna find three votes to take somebody's stuff off. That you, there's no combination of anywhere around here that you probably could get there. Read the room, pay attention. All right, I'm sure you hope that helped. Yeah, Middle ground is very, uh, very very important because all our voices are really being heard on on this uh, uh, package that's being presented this morning. I'm looking at it and what I've had to do is break it down and look at just each line by line item and each commissioner has asked for something on these lines. Um, certainly uh, I noticed we didn't mention, mention legal services of $125,000 that need to be added. Uh, duly noted, certainly would like to do that, but certainly this, need, this is a package and I agree. We are one board and we are one voice and we need to address the needs of this county and stop saying this and that and I agree. We're gonna we're gonna move forward today. I'm I'm gonna poll our board to see if there are any more questions regarding this uh, request, and then I'll call the question, because we need to move forward. We have kicked the can long enough. I have a sheriff that's waiting on cars. We have a tax commissioner and a tax assessor needing to get a system up and running, and we're just going round and round. This board is better than that. There will be dignity and respect among all of us. Again, I agree. This is not a dictatorship. We are present our our chief financial advisor has presented a package this morning that none of us have had an opportunity to look at. And we all are looking at it. And I'm trying to we need to have an open mind and just look at it with consideration. And I appreciate your feedback. 
Uh, any other comments from the board so I can call the question so we can please move forward. Okay, with that being said, Board of Commissioners, do we authorize to approve the 2021 budget improvement request and amend the 2021 general fund budget? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we move forward with this particular great job by the um, uh, our financial advisor uh, with, the, with the small condition of adding that piece from the tax commissioner at $4,800. And um, outside of that, I would like to put that motion on the floor. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, Commissioner. Right, right. so um, as a condition of my vote, um, obviously I want authorization, for, I want the group to um, authorize finance to move forward with a long-term capital plan process, Madam Chair to look at um, an ongoing maintenance program for all of public safety, right? So I wanna look at transportation, public safety and economic development. Um, this is something, I'm just setting us in motion to go study it. I look forward to the results. I'm sure um, a county administrator will be involved with that. Um, and obviously at our mid-year retreat, but the point is to authorize, as a condition to authorize finance uh, to move forward with um, preparation of a long-term capital planning based on the current strategic priorities. That's one condition. Uh, the second condition is I'm going to, um, as it relates to that um, veterans court, seeing that there was not necessarily a need for all of that at this once, I'm going to take half of that. I'm going to take 100,000 of that. Um, well, I'm going to take 50,000 of that, and I'm going to reassign it to the coroner's salary. Uh, we did not address that. It was talked about. That is a condition for my support for this. The remaining $100,000 I'll leave to the wishes of the board and we'll put back, Madam Chair, in what I want to call contingency uh, for the district commissioners to figure out what they want to do with that. So did y'all get that? Long-term capital plan, breaking apart the Veterans Court. Um, if they have a, an additional need, they'll come back more specifically. But in the meantime, 50000 to the corner for her salary ask, Whatever that balance is between the 36 and the 14, she can use it however she wants to. Um, and then the other 100,000 member chair comes back into um, contingency as a sign. That's it. Any other questions from the board or remarks? Um, Madam Chair, for purposes of parliamentary procedure, it sounds like that that motion uh, uh, Commissioner Robinson to amend the pending motion unless the movement accepts that as part of a condition of the original motion. Yep. Let, let it stay as is right now. I just want to let everybody know. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, board? Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to be honest with you, Commissioner. I love your conditions at this time, but we're going to have to punt and and, 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 and go back on, on the one yard line. Uh, certainly, uh, the, I, I respect our coroner and we and her have had conversations. And right now she says she's not interested in uh, an increase. And I, I appreciate the 50,000. I love your first condition. I thought it was absolutely amazing. But that second one regarding her salary, she is, uh, has assured me and that she's not interested right now at this particular time regarding a salary increase. Uh, I like the package as is, and, and certainly your first condition is acceptable in my eyesight, but I just, uh, I, 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 as, as my dad would say, this is a bridge too far. So uh, we may need to punt and kick, uh, punt and put the ball back on the one yard line and just shut it down. So whatever y'all wanna do, we can do at this point. Uh, so just, this is the point of order, just to help you got a motion in a second. I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Call the question, Madam Chair, and, 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 and go from there. Okay, got it, because we're not going to add the salary for the... No, uh, it is. It's not coming out. It's already in. Uh, I don't recall that being in. Madam Chair, I just made it as a condition. You're not for listening. Your, your, your condition, right? All right. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from the board? All right, we have a motion and a second. Madam uh, Chair. Mm-hmm. Commissioner I think, Mitchell. I think legal would probably say you might want to get some clarity in this whole 
makeup because you guys are speaking from different sheets of music. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, you, you move forward and understand what you just you you've done. I'm not I'm not sure you clear, Madam Chair, that what you're doing versus what Vice Chairman Robinson is stating. And I just only for clarity, I just want you guys to make sure that you guys are speaking on the same sheet of music. Um, but he's correct in stating there's a motion and a second. Um, and I don't know if you want to ask, I'm assuming that's what you're asking, that he, I apologize, you're asking that he um, um, remove, if I'm hearing you correctly, I don't want to speak for you, that he removes uh, the salary of the coroner mm -hmm. portion of his um, condition. Right. And, and it doesn't sound like he's uh, making that request, meaning he's denying that request that you're requesting. So if you move forward with the vote, then you know what you're getting, I would assume. Madam yeah, I know what I'm getting. I know where I'm going at the end of the day. So what I'm, uh, again, I don't want this to be added. So I don't know how we need to, if we need to punt, help me out legal to, to, to okay. untangle this. Um, I, I, so I, I think that's, that's why I was yeah, trying, I to Thank you, to thank you Mr. Mind. Mitchell. I need some, uh, uh, I need some help legal. Because again, well, uh, I, I, the, the, the first condition that uh, Commissioner Robinson, vice chairman of this committee, in the, uh, recommended, the first condition is, ex, is, uh, is uh, palatable. That second condition regarding the coroner's salary at this time, we I had conversations with her and we talked about fairness, dignity and respect. And I'm asking you to respect my position. The, the, uh, the coroner and I have had conversations. She is uh, certainly expressed it, her uh, gratefulness for all the items for her new building. And she has asked that you know, I, that, that she want to wait right now. She's not interested in a salary increase. She want to show the citizens of Douglas County she's interested in providing a service to take care of our citizens from sunrise to sunset. So with that being said, uh, I need you to help me legal right now. If not, we can shut it down. Mm -hmm. Ma Madam, 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 I'm sorry. Kid, 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 yeah, before, before, before you weigh in, uh, this is important. It, you don't talk to the constitutional officers alone. Don't, don't, it's like, stop. I, I, I've got something on the floor. You can't dictate. You cannot dictate. You, you, I'm letting y'all you, put legal in, y'all putting all this other stuff in. You can't deal with my hand, right? I, I just watched everything go down. I just watched everybody like, right, okay, so now I'm gonna get convenient. You all but cussed Madam Carthen out last night and shut this thing down. We had to bring this back around. See, you you get convenient, right? I, I talked to the coroner last night several times. You keep doing that. You had like, that, that Henry don't talk to the sheriff. You're in isolation. It's like, okay, you you, you ain't talking to nobody, but, but you're in your own world. It's like, okay, come on now. We right here. It's good. It's $36,000. Okay. I, it, it was part of it. We broke it apart. It wasn't a need for it. It's recurring. It's appropriate. Why, why, why are we making this an issue? She ain't got to prove nothing. She got reelected just like you did. She didn't prove her four years. Right? She, 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 she didn't did it. They sent her back in after all them four years. So what were we really talking about? $36,000. Oh, but we'll spot your staff 30000 off a of pot. Why would you do this? Why, we, why, why would you take such a hard position right here in this moment? That was just supposed to be just move. Right? So now, no, I'm not picking it up. I'm just going to let it be. And because I just think that how you just did that, that was, you could have just played off that. But you, you, you're making this between me and you. And it's like, what? Well, it's like, she got a great package, great program. She's deserving. You know what she do? I don't see you out there helping her. I don't see you spotting her. Right? Now, that, that, that's dignity. She needs to be, to be I, I don't know about prior, but no, that, that, that lady has done well by us. And what she does. She's not a janitor of humans. 
can't handle the bereave. Where's the like? Okay, really, thirty six thousand. And I can't. And I, but I, I knew it would come here, which is why I sponsored it. You got to treat, got treat her like the, um, um, Greg Baker. Task was like y'all treated her so wrong for you to just take this position in front of these people. You act like you're not no Democrat. What is wrong with you? I mean, for us to even be in this conversation, it's just heartbreaking. I got to stand here and have this conversation. Over $36,000. We have to drag you across for this budget. We're, we're the ones to set your budget in motion that you get to sit here. But for you to sit here and do this over something so small, the position you in was not for, it's not for the one that you, you're, you're wanting your possible. It was your, your base, your, your, your majority, and you're isolated. I cannot believe that we're here, but yet that's enough of this. Respectfully, right. Just call a question. Everybody back up. Call a question. Commissioner Mitchell, duly know that everybody understands, guys. Let it be. But 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 there there is no, I don't debate against myself. I'm looking at all this other stuff slipped in. Now y'all know I can take tasks on legal and everything else that's in there, like uh-huh. But you give. Everybody gives some. I let everybody sponsor what they want to sponsor. I sponsor the corner's whole bucket. And I have not moved off that. Right? But I did talk to her. There's a different position. So it, it just becomes like it's the will of the board. But let, let's 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 yield this out. And uh, again, you've got a motion and a second, and uh, we, we we go from there. Um, you got you're at that point to call a question. If it dies, if, if it fails, you don't get to vote. Doesn't get to vote. Start over. But you're you're in motion, so I yield, guys. Any other comments before before we move on? You got Ann hand up, Madam Chair. Okay, Commissioner Guider, your hand is up. Commissioner Guider. It was. It was left up. Oh, from last. I'm taking it off. I'm taking okay. it off. I, okay. I don't have anything to add. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, Commissioner, certainly we, we could have a rebuttal offline regarding your, your comments. I'm a Democrat. I'm, I'm a woman that serves an entire community. And uh, the coroner and I had a different conversation. I didn't say that she was not eligible for a raise in this package. Me and her talked about, she said we would talk about it in August when we go into the 2022 appropriations. We kicked off this year with saying no one would get a raise in a pandemic. And therefore, I have decided uh, in my mind, and it might be institutional, but right now in a pandemic, you safeguard, double down on expenses, and you don't waste money. The coroner and I, and not only that, there's a lot of other things that we could just talk about since we just want to get real right now. To me, and uh, in my opinion, to restore a budget uh, to all the department heads, and I want to make it very clear for every department head, when and if you do have restoration of your 8.25%, this is not a heyday for you to waste money because, again, you will be held accountable by our new uh, county administrator, and you will be providing variance reports on a monthly basis to track and trend your budgets. My idea, if we had to just continue to remain disciplined with the 8.25% budget, instead of rolling all those dollars back into the budgets, we could have had uh, at least some $1,000 bonuses at the end of the year, like November, for each employee all over the county, rather than putting that money back in the budget so it just sit there, because these are zero-based budgets. So we all had ideas. We all played a, a very significant part in this uh, BRR uh, um, initiative. And uh, I'm uh, on board and agree, but I don't agree with what's being added at the last minute. There's a lot of things that are just being baked in here. It's unreasonable. It's disrespect to the Finance Committee. Uh, certainly, Mr. Corbin has rolled something into the board today, and I, I believe that we should work on one accord. This right here is enough to swallow, and then we're adding additional items. I just believe that this is just just not a good time to just move forward with this vote. But we'll 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 go down the pike and see what it ends up. But I want to make it sure I'm a Democrat all day long. 
So that has nothing to do with my decision on managing a budget. I took oath to manage and safeguard the dollars of all, and all of us took the oath to ma manage and safeguard taxpayers' dollars, and that's what I'm going to do from sunrise to sunset. I'll go down dying saying I'm going to protect the assets of Douglas County. So with that being said, Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Chairman, I think we have to do this one um, manually. May I ask why, Lisa? It should be loaded. Well, in the past, if we've um, set conditions forth to a, a motion, we've always done it manually, but I'll if legal, changes, if legal, I'll, I'm I'll sorry. Help you. I'll help you. It's due to all the changes and everything that's been added and changed. So the, the current uh, layout has it's changed to where it's not documented for Lisa to kind of pull it off that way. So with that, it probably okay. needs to be done manually. Okay. All right. Oh, Thank you. You. Now, now, Lisa, I'm assuming you got all the changes. Okay. I'll just start with District 1. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pause for a second because I I just want to 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 make one statement too though before um, we move forward with the vote though, Madam Chair. Just one because um, as we all stated, we've had various conversations uh, with the coroner, so we all have. And I just want to make sure that legally, I guess I've always been under the impression that we couldn't raise her salary. Now we could do um, a supplement versus a salary increase. So I, I want to make sure that we're clear. And I don't know, Ken, is that something that you would know of or not? Um, and that way, if this, because I don't want this to, because I thought our, our delegation had to do something of that caliber versus um, making that kind of a change, not change, but that kind of a increase to a salaried um, constitutional officer. So let, let me get that first question answered. And I got one more to add to that. So Ken, I don't know, could you chime in or, or is that, Sure. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, uh, the local legislation that created the salary structure for the coroner has a provision that authorizes the Douglas County Board of Education, uh, sorry, sorry, Douglas County Board of Commissioners, I'm sorry, to uh, make changes, adjustments to that salary. So you do have the legal authority under the local legislation to make changes in the coroner's salary. Uh, based on the local legislation that we're currently operating under. Oh, got you. Okay, so we do have the authority. Okay, I just I was I was always under the impression that that had to come from my uh, legislator versus. Um, uh, the yeah, when that, that that was that that was correct until a change in the last administration when that set when the uh, I think it was I want to say 2012, but I may be wrong about the dates. When they okay. changed the salary of the then coroner, uh, the had to go to the state legislature to get that done. And when that happened, the provision they put in allowed y'all to make the changes going forward. Got you. Okay. Thank you for that, that bit of advice. Okay. Well, thank you kindly. Because I was, I was actually going to make that approach a little bit differently. But I guess if that's the case, then I'm going to leave that alone. Um, I'll yield the floor back, Madam Chair. Well, the commissioners, we have a motion and second on the floor. Certainly, I'm trying to see what we're going to do in terms of moving forward. Board well, commissioners, we have a motion and second on the floor. Uh, please, when I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one. I'm going to pause for a second, Madam Chair, and I'll I'll give my uh, vote okay. here shortly. Okay. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. No. District 1. Madam Chair, if you'll go ahead and, and continue on. Okay. Chairman, no. District 1. I'll abstain. Okay, we have a tie. Legal, we have two yeses and two noes and one abstain. The, the motion does not move, <clears throat> then you can call for another motion, Madam Chair. Okay.
Okay, Board of Commissioners. Okay. okay. I, I, I'll make uh, uh, the, the same exact motion with the condition of setting aside Vice Chairman Robinson $50,000 for the corner to be revisited on how we would apply that to either salary and or um, supplement or whatever that end up being at a later discussion though. So the same motion, but just that only one condition. Okay, uh, any other discussion, um, discussion regarding uh, Commissioner Mitchell's you, condition? You, you need a second. You need a second. Right we here. have a second. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? Okay. The, the motion fails for lack of a second. So let me try something. And it probably won't make it either. I would like to make a motion to authorize to approve the 2020 budget improvement request as presented by our David Corbin, Chief Financial Advisor, with condition of actually entertaining, as as proposed earlier, to to review the coroner's budget in the 2020 budget uh, re, uh, workshop or retreat during in August of 2021, and uh, the decision be made at that time regarding the increase of $36,000 as requested. Do we have a second? Can you do me a favor, Madam Chair? Restate your, your motion so I can make sure I understood what you just said. Okay. Do we have a motion to authorize and approve the 2021 budget improvement request and amend the 2021 general fund budget and with a condition of um, carving out or allocating $36,000 for the coroner's budget to um, the salary increase to be revisited during the August 2022 budget workshop, which will be August of 2021 uh, is when we um, start discussing our 22 And budget. I apologize, Madam Chair. You're, 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 Madam Chair, I apologize. Your, your connection is really, really bad. <laughs> and I don't uh, know if I'm can, the only one. Can you hear me now? Yes, much better. Okay. But, okay, with the condition, I just said the same thing, authorization to approve the twin. Can you hear me? We can hear you fine, Madam Chair. Go ahead with your motion. I just got to be honest with you. I, I, maybe it's me. But I, it's I'm probably getting, Commissioner Mitchell. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just want to make sure. Okay. Can, can, okay. Well, can I'm, uh, I'm Commissioner just, Mitchell uh, hear you? Commissioner Carthen, if, if you could restate what I said for him because he can't hear me. Commissioner Mitchell, see now he's frozen. So go ahead. I think he's frozen. <laughs> okay, so that's why I'm choppy. But anyway, do we have a second? Okay, the motion fails for lack of a second. And Commissioner Mitchell is still frozen. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion? I'll make another motion. Do we have a motion? To okay, Commissioner Carthen, you would like to make a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we vote on it as presented at the beginning of this meeting. That is minus the tax commissioner car allowance. That is minus any other additions. If we could just vote on the package as presented by our um, CFA and as sent to us on last night. That is my motion. What, when the package, do we have that package that was presented to us last night? Um, that, yeah, that's, it's, it's, Right, it's the one that I think uh, David Corbin and Rosalind sent to us last night. I received it last night. I looked at it yes. this morning. That's the same package that's before you, and that's the one that is actually on the agenda that we can actually vote on manual. I meant um, via the uh, the uh, the technology via civic clerk. Yes, go back to the first one. Um, All right, and yeah. you know, I'll give you a second. Got a second. Yeah, look at the one you, you sent it like. Is this the one you're talking about this up now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay, we have a motion, and I heard a second. And this, so for clarity purposes, with your motion, Commissioner Carthen, if you could restate it, because I want to make sure that we uh, are all on one accord. Authorization to approve the 2021 budget improvement requests and amend the 2021 general budget fund budget as presented by David Corbin. 
Yes. And we have a second. We have a motion and a second. Is Commissioner Mitchell back with us? Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Okay, and the vote is in your, we have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your vote. Madam Chair. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm, any discussion? Thank you. Commissioner Robinson. Thank you. All right, let's try this again. All right, so um, again, it's a condition of the authorized the finance um, department to move forward on the long-term capital plan process, um, focusing on um, public safety, ongoing maintenance program, two, economic development, and three, and or transportation. Okay. Any other conditions? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Yes, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Commissioner uh, Mitchell. Apologies. And, I'm, and it, it must be me with a bad connection because I, I, I'm struggling trying to make sure I'm hearing you guys. So I think I heard Vice Chairman Robinson about the condition of the long-term capital plan with, and State Vice Chairman Robinson, I apologize. I'm having some technical issues on my end. But you're wanting, the, as we spoke about uh, with the cars of the sheriff, a long-term capital plan, whether it's a 12 months. 15 months type of a layout where we'll revisit, not revisit, but put a plan together that will authorize these cars to be, be replaced in, on an annual basis of some sort. But you're looking for a plan from the finance or whatever committee that is, correct? Am I hearing you correctly? Finance only. I okay, that's finance. good. A financial plan. I just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. No, I, okay, that this, again, I'm very clear with my words, a long-term capital plan that focuses on ongoing maintenance for public safety vehicles, comma, economic development and transportation. Those are my words. Let them lie. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's okay. I, I mean, um, and the only other part to that, um, no, I'm, I'm going to leave that out. I'm going to leave that alone because um, the sheriff and I have had uh, numerous conversations about about his plan with the cars we are looking at as of today. So I'll leave it that. I'll leave it there. I'm going to leave that alone. I'll leave it right there. I'll yield back. Okay, I want to insert a condition as well for this board to, of course, well, I'll leave that. I'll leave my condition alone right now. It's, it's related to SPLOS going into 2023. I want to make sure that we have a bucket prepared for uh, public safety. We need to look at that, but I'll leave that alone. I won't insert that condition. That will be discussed later. Board of Commissioners, you have uh, the, um, certainly please uh, prepare to cast your votes if there's no other um, questions. If there are no other questions, please prepare to catch the votes. Madam Chair, I don't know, but we might want to ask Lisa, I think, based on the mere fact of the conditions no, and the it, changes. It's, it's already up. Uh, do we need to vote manually now, Lisa, because of that condition? Well, I had already um, started the vote prior to that condition being made, so um, I would I would think just because the the last one that we did, we added a condition that we changed. We changed it. So um, I don't know legal. Can we go ahead and move forward or? Or handle. We can just. Uh, right we, can, uh, we can vote so manually. Listen, this, yeah. So listen. Here. Here's the deal. If the conditions are part of this motion, as if they're a friendly amendment then they need to be detailed, Lisa. And so what you posted to vote is not what they're voting on. If the conditions are just statements of desires and they're not part of the original motion or amendments to the original motion, you can vote on what you have up. But I, I, I don't hear that, but I just want to clarify that.
from what I understand, it was not the condition was not the the motion was not amended. The condition was just made after the motion. If there's no amendment, you can vote as it is. If there was a desire for it to be amendment, we should go through the amendment process. Commissioner Robinson, do you desire this uh, condition to be made as an amendment or what are you so we can move forward? Uh, who made the motion? Madam Carson? Mm -hmm. Madam Carson? Is she still here? Okay. okay. What are we, what are we doing? Are so we you made the motion on this on this? Uh, you made the motion. We're just wondering if you because right now we can vote electronically. We can certainly uh, certainly do. You want to vote manually or electronically because we had to make an uh, an amendment to so this. From from what I heard from Commissioner Robinson's um, amendment, that was a friendly amendment. It it didn't it yeah. was it was being added as a condition of his vote for this to relook at a long term capital planning project. So okay, yeah, okay. It's, it's was, friendly. so we good. Okay, we're gonna vote um, electronically. Uh, Board of Commissioners, please prepare to cast your votes. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. No. Chairman motion failed three um, to two. Okay. All right, let's punt and, and kick and get, we'll start on the one yard line again. Those three items that we talked about yesterday uh, in, in the, uh, our meeting, there were three particular items that we wanted to brought before this board this morning. We have those, the, the finance committee is, has prepared a slide and we are ready to discuss those, uh, those particular items that were discussed yesterday as this board made a commitment to the citizens of Douglas County, and they were to restore the 8.25% budget cut to all departments, the sheriff office vehicle plan. Uh, we have already, um, thank you, David Corbin and, and, and um, Rosalind Miller, and then of course the tax commissioner's new software, Tyler Technologies, uh, which is at $514,000. And those, that's certainly what, uh, what was discussed, and that's what the finance committee and the, also the finance uh, financial team, finance team is expecting to discuss. But of course, uh, we went a little further. So we went too deep. Uh, we want to look at a superficial plan right now, and certainly we will discuss if 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 there's the will of this board, those other items in two weeks. But we really need to move forward on Not two there. items. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. mm -hmm. We already have the slide up. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I, be, be, I get it, but we haven't gotten into that. I, I, I'd still like to uh, revisit um, 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 uh, the prior vote and just bring forth another. I'd like to make a motion according to Madam Carthen, as she stated, uh, with the condition, so Lisa, with the condition of the long-term capital uh, planning process for economic development, transportation, and public safety vehicles uh, to be prepared by the finance team, our committee, the finance team, along with the new county administrator to be discussed during the mid-year retreat. That is the motion. Okay. Thank you. All right. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion uh, to authorize and approve um, three of our no, that's not what I said. Okay, what did you say again? Right. Um, because we are back to the first I slide. I understand, Madam Chair, but 
my motion was to approve my motion was to approve the presentation according to Madam Carthen of, of David Corbin at the beginning of this meeting with, with no addition no dialogue right so that that original presentation that he put up I make a motion that would approve that recommendation by your finance team as is with the condition of the commitment to do a long-term capital planning process to be delivered by the county administrator and the finance team to the full board of commissioners during the mid-year retreat to focus on economic development, transportation, mm -hmm. and public safety vehicles. That is the motion. Okay, do we have a second? Motion fails for elect. Okay. Madam, Madam, Madam Chair, you have a. I, I just, I was waiting. I was waiting. You have a motion. Now you need a second. No, I have one. I heard it. Do we have a second? I thought I did. Yeah. Hello. Madam Chair, you have a second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Can you restate the motion, Madam Chair, or either Attorney Bernard, if you can restate the motion with the condition so that everyone is clear? Carson, I apologize. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Are you asking me to restate the motion? Yes. I, I, I can only do it the clerk? From, from memory, but everything that commissioner, yeah, the clerk would be the one that would have recorded it. Yeah, I can I can restate it for you. Okay, um, Commissioner Robinson motion to approve the list presented today by the finance team uh, with the condition of the long-term capital plan to be prepared by our finance team along with the county administrator to be discussed at the mid-year retreat to include um, the ongoing maintenance of public safety vehicles, economic development, and transportation. Is that correct, Commissioner Robinson? Yes, it is. Do we have a second? We have a second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Uh, Lisa, this one I just have to go work manually um, with the board uh, on in yes, terms of responses. Okay, thank you. Uh, District 1. District 1, Commissioner Mitchell. I can come back if you want me to. Commissioner Mitchell. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Commissioner Robinson. Yes. Commissioner Carthen. Yes. Commissioner Mitchell. Hmm. Commissioner Guider. No. Commissioner Mitchell, what happened to Commissioner Mitchell? Um, Lisa, can you see him on the line? Yes, ma'am, he's still showing on the line. Madam Chair, he's having technical difficulties. He keeps coming in and out, so. Okay, Lisa, is it a way he can, he can call in? <laughs> Commissioner Mitchell? Sure. Lisa, you see him as muted? Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. We were waiting. Oh, okay. We just waiting oh. on your response. Um, 
and we're voting on it because, I, I, like I said, I'm having some issues with hearing you guys, but I, I think we're voting until I last heard this particular item, what I'm looking at in front of me now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I don't know where we are with that, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to abstain and, and I'll abstain for now because I'm not sure kind of where we are with that though. Okay. Okay. And my, and my vote is no. So we have a two yeses, two no to abstain. We need to punt and kick and move back to the one yard line. Can we put the first slide up that we talked about three items earlier, uh, if you could, Finance Committee, uh, Financial Advisor, Chief Financial Advisor. Board of Commissioners on our budget improvement request, there is a, we talked about three items yesterday. We left the board and we had a consensus that we would talk about the restore 8.25% budget cut for all departments, the Sheriff Office vehicle uh, plan. We certainly want to make sure we uh, put our officers on the road because right now they're walking. And then we have a tax commissioner's new software, Tyler Technologies, and that does not in, only include the tax mission, commissioner. We have the, the, the tax assessor waiting and also GIS. Board of Commissioners, the, this is what we talked about yesterday. Certainly would like us to, to certainly take the time and, and, and uh, spend two weeks for the next two weeks uh, just mulling over those other items that were on the list, and they sure they will come back before you. But in order uh, for the uh, because these items are really time sensitive and I ask that if we could work as one board today on one accord and move these items through certainly based on a vote so we can uh, come back uh, in two weeks and discuss the other items that are listed uh, on this uh, particular uh, proposal that's coming before us from our chief financial advisor. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to, uh, to uh, approve the three items that we discussed yesterday in our work session? Uh -huh. For the for this budget and uh, budget improvement request, do we have a motion to approve the three items, which is restore the 8.25 percent budget cut for all departments, the sheriff office vehicle plan, and the tax commissioner's new software Tyler uh, Technologies at this time? Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Board, any discussion? There's no discussion. Madam well, Chair. Uh huh. Commissioner Guider. Um, these three items, at least the last two, number two and number three, the sheriff's office vehicles and the tax commissioner software, they are time sensitive. I think we should move forward uh, if um, if we want this uh, county to move forward. Um, these are uh, items that we've. Uh, We've discussed so many times. Uh, I've gotten gray hair uh, doing it. But uh, anyway, um, I wish that the board would have the consensus that we would move forward with these very crucial items. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Board uh, of Commissioners, we have a motion. Any other questions or com comments from Board of Commissioners? Because we're in discussion in the discussion phase. We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one? No. Okay, district two? No. District three? No. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a two, two, so we have three no's and two yeses. So where do we go from here, board? I, I've called every play I can think of at this time, so. I'm going to yield to one of my board members and we can go from there. And if not, we can wrap it up and move on to the consent agenda because time is of the essence. So where, where do we go from here? Do we have any other motions? Uh, Commissioner Mitchell, would you like to make one? No, Madam Chair, I, I've already made my motions. And, uh, okay. okay. Due, to the, Commissioner due, to of, uh, due to the lack of, uh, of it failing, I don't remember exactly what happened, but so. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Commissioner uh, Guider, would you like to make a motion? I'm just trying to have everybody's made one. I just want to make sure I accommodate all of my board, uh, board members. That's very important to me. And then we're going to move on. 
I don't think we're in agreement on uh, all the other items. So, um, no, no, ma'am. I don't know okay. what, uh, unless we just take them one by one. We could take uh, uh, the sheriff's uh, program. I make a motion that we approve the sheriff's BIR. Do we have a second to just take them one by one board so we can do it that way? Okay. Commissioner Guida fails for lack of a, a second. Okay. Board of Commissioners. It's hard to really have a combination of three in any given scenario. Again, one more time, it was right there. And it, was, it was simple. And, and you, I, I would say that you knock your consent out. Um, you got people that are on here. If you need to come back and pause, maybe we wait till the county administrator comes on board, seeing that we, we, we may need a, a different um, approach to talking to us. That, um, maybe he's going a different direction. So um, right now, I'm, 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 I'm unsettled on taking up anything at this point. But y'all, um, my peers, you know, you guys can always get to three without that. But um, this was some good work. And it's unfortunate that we, we, we can't put things aside, right? And we're, we're, we're just doing it because we can. And it's silly. And I'm disappointed. Just like, okay, really? Right? We're, we're, we're fighting against each other. And like, they're looking at us like, really, guys? And, it, and it's like, this is so simple, right? It's just being able to accommodate, to be inclusive. Everybody gets to play. But, but the hatred, some of the stuff that's just seething out, like, okay, that's, it, it, it's some things you just give. I mean, we're all we're adding stuff in. And it's just, you, it's, it's too immature. It's an immature in the moment. You didn't have to attack. Some of it is just like, okay, you can just disagree, but don't, because people will get defensive. They will clap back. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, ah, come on, guys. Uh, and it's, it's how to work within conditions versus attacking the person. Like, well, figure out how to make the motion. Like, I'm not going to help you with that, right? But don't attack me. Like, know how to work the rules. That was a, that was the failure of that moment. It had nothing to do with me. You had some on the table. They were giving you recommendations. They were telling you what to do. It had nothing to do with me. All you had to go was find two other people to sort of agree with to take the condition out. Right? And, and it's always about allowing me to have my voice. There is no censorship. I've been through the First Amendment. We all get to speak. Right? And we all get to coexist. You know, this, this is, uh, maybe we need to take some time out. I know Commissioner Mitchell is always sensitive about uh, how much time we take. But I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm indifferent right now to vote on anything regarding the budget because I just think that what we had was is still solid. Any other, any other, it's like, okay, guys, where y'all going? And, and we're wasting time. And, and it's being able to say, okay, guys, y'all, let, let, let's try this again, take time out. But it, just digging in and just, it's like, ah, come on, move on. But. That's it, Madam Chair. I'm going to yield. You got your consent agenda. You can try to move with that, Madam Chair, see if you get some motion on that. I mean, let's be productive at least. Can we knock that out? Yeah, we're going to move on. Uh, yeah. Madam uh, Chair, I propose that we table the business item number seven for, you know, another day. And mm -hmm. I just say, you know, um, this, this board is really, you know, um, it's inclusive, despite what most people may think. Our board really is inclusive. There was something here for our citizens. Yes, the sheriff needs his cars, but I pray I am never in the back of a sheriff's car. Yes, the coroner needs her vans, but I pray I'm never in the back of a van. But I tell you, being able to have the grass cut, being able to have the litter picked up, being able to walk into Pumpkin Town Park with your family, those are the things that these citizens would have actually been able to experience. And since the three of us actually passed this budget, um, minus Commissioner Guider and minus Commissioner Mitchell, for these citizens, they have sacrificed. And for them not to get anything passed or any budget um, item that they can actually feel, touch, and experience without coming in contact with the Sheriff's Department or the Coroner's Department, I think it's just, it, it's a travesty. Sometimes you have to think about those who you actually serve and how they will be able to experience what they have paid for. Our Parks and Rec needs to have these updates. Our 
actual citizens going home and having people visit their homes need to make sure that they have a clean community. So I hope and pray that when we revisit this, that we all think about what it is the citizens can experience when we revisit these items. With that, Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Carthen. Very well said. Actually, I believe you had uh, wanted to table. Did you make a motion to table this item? I did. Yes. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Board of Commissioners, any discussion? Okay, Just Board of Commissioners. I, okay, I apologize. Okay, what are we tabling? And, and, and guys, I'm struggling with trying to hear you guys. My apologies. What are we tabling? We're, we're tabling the, the actual business item itself, the entire uh, thing, the authorization to approve the budget of 2021 oh, budget. Okay. So okay. it's being tabled at this table. time. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. My apologies, but okay. Got it. Yeah. Uh, this the Board of Commissioners. Uh, unfortunately, we were not able to reach a consensus today. Uh, I echo uh, some of the sentiments of uh, Commissioner Carthen, but at the same time, I echo the sentiments of the uh, Finance Committee who have worked diligently to bring this information forth. Our goal is not to break the bank in a pandemic, and we will not. We will double down on expenses as we certainly guaranteed our citizens that we would do. And of, of course, we still would have been in a good financial position with $16 million in our uh, reserve funds, but that's not a lot of money for a county of this size. Uh, certainly $22 million, we were headed in the right direction, but of course we need the share of cars. We need a system. Those things are very time sensitive. And I'm hoping uh, when our county administrator uh, arrived in, by, on the 19th, and that, that is our next meeting, we will be able to flow through, uh, meet with each other. I ask that you all poll one another, discuss, and I will continue to source you and talk to you. But all the items that were on this list today, I was comfortable with. But of course, some of the things, but we did not discuss these items. So what we're going to do, we, we need to punt, kick, go back. Uh, of course, the Finance Committee would like to uh, certainly we look at those items that are on the list that uh, David Corbin has so well uh, deserved, uh, drafted for us today to look at. We will have conversations and discuss, discussion about those items, and we uh, look forward to bringing something back to the Board of Commissioners. Uh, Board of Commissioners, we have a, uh, on the on the table not right now. We have a motion and a second, and uh, please um, respond accordingly with your response for the tabling. District one. And for our vote, though, so this will be moved back to the county manager, upcoming the, county manager, to yeah. actually um, come back with. The, the county manager will be working with the finance chief financial advisor again to bring back so the, the recommendation. But of course, the finance committee will still be involved to just listen, hear uh, the narrative, the, the questions, the concerns. We love the capital outlay that our chief financial advisor has developed. That is something that's required by Moody's. I'm respecting that, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we are all on one accord. My uh, hope is when we uh, discuss this item on in two weeks that we can all vote in the same move in the same direction, approve accordingly, and move on to the next thing. We have an urgency here for our sheriff and our tax commissioners. I've said so many times. I've said that repeatedly. So we have a motion and a second. Commissioner, what's your response for this tabling? District one. I, I was, I mean, the, the long, the, the dissertation was fine. I, I was just making sure, because like I told you guys, I'm struggling with trying to hear what you guys are saying. But at the end of the day, yes, we were tabling it for that reasoning and that reasoning to get it back to the county manager and or the finance committee and or uh, David and his crew. That's okay. I'm fine with that. So, yes. Okay. District two? Yes, to table. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. Okay. Chairman, yes, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote to table, and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Madam Please. Chair, yes. Madam Chair, as you consider the consent agenda, one item that was discussed yesterday was contingent upon the vote on the financial part, and that's the Tyler Technologies uh, uh, contract for the uh, tax commissioner and the Board of Assessors. Are you moving that to the 19th because it is not funded until y'all vote on funds? Correct. So I will just uh, make a motion to table. Is that okay, um, legal counsel? Well, I mean, I just want you to know before you approve a 
an item that's not yet funded because right. we're sort of yeah, it, 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 yes, yeah, okay. exactly. Okay, board of commissioners. As you review your consent agenda, there's a tab, tab number 18, which is indicating the authorization to approve an agreement with Tyler Technologies for the new tax commissioner software and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Right now, we're not able to move in that direction because we have not approved the BRRs yet. So do we have a motion to table this particular item and to, uh, to September, uh, April 19th, I believe. So moved, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please respond accordingly for tabling. T uh, tab number 18, District 1. Yes. District 2. Yes. District 3. No. Okay. District 4. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 4 1 vote and the motion carries. So we're going to move on and uh, this item will be tabled and uh, clerk. When is our next work session? Is it April 18th or 19th? And uh, just one second. It is the next work session is April the 19th. Okay, April 19th, Board of Commissioners, you will see uh, this tab come before you again for discussion. And then, of course, it will move to the consent agenda with again, uh, we will tr attempt again to uh, address our BRRs that were approved with the March budget in the March budget. Okay, let's go with the consent agenda. All items are subject to final legal review. Board of Commissioners, I'll start with tab number eight. Authorization to accept the STOP, STOP Violence Against Women Act, BAWA grant through the C Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, CJCC, in the amount of $53,849 with no match for our domestic violence prosecutor position in the Solicitor General's office, the uh, offices. Domestic Violence Unit for the 2021 grant year authorized the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. Tab number nine, authorization to accept a $20,000 grant with no match as part of the FY20 Delinquency Prevention Grant Program from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 10, authorization to apply for the 2021 CDBG grant from the GA Department of Community Affairs in the amount of $750,000 with a 5% cash match of $37,500 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 11, authorize the Douglas County Sheriff's Office to renew right away maintenance agreement with GDOT uh, and authorize chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Uh, tab number 12, authorization for the chairman to execute a grant-funded part-time contract with Gabrielle Howard as Baby Steps Safe Care Case Manager under Juvenile Programs Department. Tab number 13, authorization to adopt the resolution and award the bid for a tax anticipation note to PNC Bank in the amount of $12 billion for an annual rate of 0.36% and $5,000 bank legal fees and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Tab number 14, authorization to approve a rental agreement, agreement with the city of Douglasville for day use of the fire department training exercise and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Tab number 15, authorization to renew the MOU between Douglas County Board of Commissioners and UGA Cooperative extension and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 16, authorization to accept funds from the Sarge Fight Memorial Fund in the amount of $9,202 and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 17, authorization to approve a memorandum of agreement with Food Fitness First in Inc. to provide nutrition nutritional counseling services by a qualified registered dietitian to eligible clients of the Douglas County Senior Center located on Fairburn Road. Tab number 19, authorization to advertise for a public hearing for the purpose of changing the street name of Don Food uh, Parkway to Baker's Lane pursuant to a request from the new owners of the facility. Tab number 20, authorization to approve the supplement number six in the amount of $4,145.92 on the consulting engineering services contract with Michael Baker International Inc. 
for additional design work at the intersection of State Route 92 and Lee Road related to the signal permit in connection with the Lee Road Phase 2 widening project P1 0004428 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 21, authorization to approve supplement number one in the amount of $19,786.56 on the Consultant Engineer and Services Task Order with Michael Baker International Inc. for a phase two environmental assessment in connection with the Highway 5 and Douglas Boulevard intersection improvement project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 22, authorization to allocate remaining 2016 SPLOST funds from the State Route 92 and Mount Vernon Road intersection traffic signal project and the State Route 92 and Riverside Parkway tra traffic signal project for the purposes of purchasing an officer trailer and portable restroom trailer facilities to house the DOT maintenance staff until a more permanent replacement for the burnt out facility on Chicago Avenue is established. Tab number 23. Adoption of a policy regarding implementation of federal mask mandate pursuant to presidential executive order for compliance with the order in conformance with FTA and CDC guidelines applicable to public transit agencies and facilities as discussed at the Transportation Committee meeting. And finally, tab number 24, Board of Commissioners authorization to approve a memorandum of agreement with Social Involvement Missions, Inc., to administer the Douglas County COVID Relief Small Business Grants. Board of Commissioners, you have heard the consent, all the items on the consent agenda, and this concludes our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Board of Commissioners on any item? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to catch the vote. Madam Clerk, yes. Board of Commissioners, I believe everyone is cast of those. I'll wait on you, Clerk, with the response. Yeah, I'm just waiting on one more. Okay, thank you. Okay, motion passed 5 0. Okay, we have a 5 0 vote, and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, thank you so much. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, do you have any individual announcements that you would like to uh, offer to the citizens of Douglas County at this time? Okay, being none, uh, Rick Martin. Madam, you, uh, mm -hmm. Madam Chair, before you before you recess for the PNC meeting, we mm -hmm. need an executive session for litigation. It will only take about five minutes. Okay. So thank you so much, Attorney Bernard. With that being and, said, and Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Commissioner just, I don't know if you noticed, um, Sheriff Tim Pounds has had his hand up throughout the entire oh, meeting. Okay, and, I did and, not see. I well, okay. I think he just, he just dropped off, so I guess that's a, he, he left us. Okay, all right, you can take, forget that now. Okay. Um, Rick Martin, if you could, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Rick Martin, you please lead us um, with our announcements, lead in with our announcements, please. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Happy to do so. As far as announcements, we have two announcements to uh, deliver the great Douglas County Shredding event. Our annual event uh, has been scheduled. Uh, please asking everyone to save the date for Saturday, May 15th at 9 a.m. outside the Douglas County Courthouse. This will be a drive through opportunity for um, citizens and staff um, and anyone here in Douglas County to drive through and drop their items, documents, uh, right before tax deadline scheduled for May 17th. Uh, the event, again, great Douglas County shredding event, uh, a well attended event, drive through event, Saturday, May 15th, 9 a.m., outside the Douglas County Courthouse. Last, <clears throat> excuse me, last but not least, uh, free COVID-19 testing is still being offered at Derelict Park, 2171 Mac Road, Douglasville, Georgia. Uh, it's a drive-through testing Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday as well. From if necessary. 
That concludes the announcements for today. Madam Chair, I yield back to you. Thank you so much, uh, Director Martin, for those announcements. Okay, Board of Commissioners at this time, um, Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into executive session? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? It's for litigation. For litigation, yes. So Board of Commissioners. Okay, so move. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Board of Commissioners, any discussion? We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District 1? Yes. District 2? District 2? District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. Chairman, yes. District 2? Did he fall off? I don't see him on here any longer, Chairman. He must have fell off. Okay, Board of Commissioners, we have a 4-0 um, vote to go into executive session. That's enough. We have a quorum at least to, to allow us to move to the next point. Okay, um, we have a 4 vote and the motion carries. Um, Board of Commissioners, Lisa, if you Lisa. could provide us with some... There, Commissioner uh, Robinson, did I hear your voice? No, that was me, I think, Madam Chair. Oh. Lisa, I'm going to need James Worthington on the call if he could join us. Okay. Oh. Okay, okay. And whatever instructions. Yeah, provide us with our instructions. Thank you. Okay, this is um, a little out of the norm, so we usually have a meeting already set up to call y'all into, so this is new for me, so just bear with me. I will try to call you all in on a separate call. Just do not close out teams, but hang up from this call. Okay, thank you so much, Lisa, and, and thank you, citizens of Douglas County, for your patience. We will, turn, we will return momentarily. Thank you. Thank you so much again, Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County, with uh, particularly for your patience regarding our uh, quick executive session uh, during our legislative meeting today. I uh, would like to just lead, leave you with the three W's. If you could continue to watch your social distancing, wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day, and wear a mask when in public, uh, despite whether you received a vaccine or not, is greatly appreciated not only by CDC and the health officials and overall the community at large. Um, if there's nothing else to come before this board right now, we will recess until 6 p.m. this evening for our joint P&Z board uh, meeting. So, Board of Commissioners, we are going into recess, and I will see you at 6 p.m. Thank you so much.